should praise know. God. Praise God. What's up, Facebook family? Blessings, got, saints. Blessings, blessings. Of course, you got Brother Lou, Brother Jeremy, Brother Gerard. Um, oh, let me make sure I got this. Okay, boom. All right, guys. Today we have something really, really good, like always, because when God gives you something, it's good. God don't give Come junk. On. God Come don't on, give somebody. garbage. Come on. Come he on, always gives some jewels. He always Come gives on, you man. wisdom. That's way better than money. He gives you that wisdom. That, that, that revelation knowledge that money can't buy that the revelation only comes through the through the Holy Spirit. And that's it. You know, so God has something really good for all of us today. Uh-huh. Even e- even for us, even for us three right here. God has something good for us. He, as my brothers are speaking, I'm listening. I want to hear God speak through them. And I know they, they do the same through me. We want to hear God even speak to all of you that that's in the chat room. So make sure you guys share this right here. You like you comment, you engage with us. I'm hearing some feedback, but it's all right. That's me. All right. So Fixed. today we're going to be you guys seen the topic It's called true repentance that we're going to be talking about true repentance, forgiving, forgiving right. others. You know, some people condemn themselves. We're going to be talking about forgiving yourself and, and, and just allowing the Lord to forgive you. Amen. E- Amen. Even the Bible says it's not the will of God that any shall perish, yes. but that we all should come to repentance. You know, so as, as we speak about true repentance, you know, I, I see some people, um, they say, um, I repent every day. I'm repenting every day. I'm like, are you born again? Why are you repenting every single day? I understand you. We got to tell God, you know, forgive me. But what is repentance? True repentance to me, as far as as I look in the scriptures and and what I learned, true repentance means you turn away from your wicked ways and you Mm. no longer go back to it. You refuse to practice the old lifestyle. That's true repentance. You see, I'm not talking about if you fell into fornication and you were tempted and you fell into it. But then you said, God, forgive me. You're not doing it no more. You see that that's true repentance right there. When you turn away from it, you see not when you continue Amen. to practice it. So Amen. we're going to touch on a, a few scriptures. I know I have a few illustrations. I know my brother's got a few illustrations on, on what is true repentance, because when Jesus shed his blood on the cross, he gave us victory. You know, we don't have to walk around uh, right. d- defeated. That's right. Because who was our God? He, he's a champion, like the song that we sing. Amen. Our God is a champion. Yes. You know, that's one song that Jeremy used to sing all the time with the, that guitar back there. <laughs> so, um, champion, love it. Amen. So make sure you got, um, invite your friends in here. Blessings to Tori. We see you in here. She already tagging Praise people God. in here. Blessing we're going to be sister. talking about forgiveness and, uh, we're going to just share the word. Many, many, many people walk around with a heaviness. And I was one of those people. I, I would walk around with a heaviness. And then as I started to examine myself, I'm like, wow, I don't like this person. I don't like that person. I have a bitter heart. But that's that's the thing. When you spend time with Jesus, you can forgive those that mm. you may say, I would never forgive that person. I can't forgive them. They did me so dirty. I would never forgive you. But when you start to connect with Jesus, he, the Bible says you, you got to love those that persecute you. Yeah. The Bible says to pray for your enemies. You got to forgive them. But that's something that you can't do on your own strength. When I'm talking about forgiveness, I'm talking about true forgiveness from your heart. Not with your lips, because I can say I forgive you on my lips. But in my heart, me and God know if I. If, if, if it's real, if it's genuine, or is it a, is it a fake forgiveness? Yeah. You know, what did Jesus say on the cross, even to the people that did him dirty and filthy and they were beating on him? What did he say? Forgive, forgive them. Father, them. So they know not what they, they do. Don't, sometimes we just got to forgive people because they're, they're ignorant of the Bible. Even some no. believers, they're ignorant of the word. They don't know what they're doing. So we got to extend mercy and, and grace and show compassion towards them. But that's only possible when we connect with the Lord Jesus Christ. So, um. That was my little introduction right there. I want you guys to be Great excited. Put your seatbelts on. We're going to be speaking about true repentance. There's victory. There's power in the blood of Jesus. So Amen. one of you brothers could just jump in. We're going to, we flow in the Holy Ghost. We're we just going to flow. I, I know I got a Praise couple God. notes, but sometimes I don't Amen. even read those. Praise God. Amen. That's, that's great. Yeah. Amen. Well, Gerard, no. No, go ahead, he, Jerry. He hit it. Well, he hit a couple. I think I gave too many scriptures, right? Was it too yeah, many? Yeah. yeah, yeah no, sorry. You, 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 I think you actually, you actually podcast. laid a really good foundation. Yeah, that's good. Um, so yeah. go ahead, Jer. Well, <laughs> well, I think we just first start with um, the simple word you said, the simple, but the, um, uh-huh. the hardest thing Jesus had to do was the blood of Jesus Christ. Ooh. If if we, how do we separate ourselves from the world? I have a scripture um, mm-hmm. that, that came to my mind when you said the blood of Jesus. Simply, how do you repent? You, you believe that Jesus died for the remissions of your sins. He mm-hmm. died to, uh, he died to atone. He was the atoning sacrifice. He, he died to, um, to, to redeem man from their sins. He died for our sins. 
And, and the only the only way to separate, simple as this. The only so so the word we can start a foundation. The only way to repent is by the blood of Jesus, by the cross. Right. Jesus died for our sins. Mm. And the only way to say, now I am separate from the world is to say, I believe in the blood of Jesus. I believe in his, I died. And that's why baptism is so important because you're actually going down in faith in, um, in his death Amen. under, un, you're putting yourself under the water in death and you're raising, you're, you're resurrecting new. So the only way to true repentance, and I have a, I have a verse here. True repentance only comes by the blood of Jesus, the blood of the lamb mm. who was our sacrifice for our sins on the cross. Amen. He said, I'm going to sacrifice. He said, you guys circumcise yourself in the old Testament. And, and you guys didn't even keep your word. You were circumcised. You, you shed your blood for me. God saying, now I'm going to shed my blood for you. Mm. He covered, he covered Israel with the, with the doorposts and the, um, with a, with a branch of the hip. He covered Israel, but with his blood on the cross, he covered the world. So the blood, he covered our sins. And I want to read one verse and I'll pass it mm -hmm. on. Um, uh, back in Exodus, when, when, when he said, uh, God said, God said to Pharaoh, let my people go mm. so they can worship. How can you worship God by being separate from Pharaoh, by being separate from Egypt? God said to Pharaoh, let my people go. So God's saying Amen. to me, Jeremy, God's saying to you, how can you leave the world? How can you leave only by the blood of Jesus? And if you, and if you, if you believe in the blood of Jesus, the only way to separate yourself from Pharaoh, God's only one uh, uh, desire was say all those plagues. He said, I want my people to be separate from Pharaoh so they can go what? Right. into the desert to worship. How can you go into the desert to worship God? And he hears our worships and he's pleased with our worships. One thing right here, uh, Exodus 11, verse, um, uh, verse one, I will bring one more plague unto you, Pharaoh, and mm. you will release my people. It is the plague. I will, I will slaughter all the firstborns and the blood of Jesus will be slaughtered. And the only way to protect yourself. And he said this, uh, 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 11, seven, this is, this is, this is how you know that you, you have repentance. And then I'm all done. Mm -hmm. 11, seven, but among Israel, the blood was going to be shed, but among Israel, not a dog will bark at any man or animal. Israel will not be touched because you are separate from the world. You're under the blood. Check this out. Then you will know that the Lord has made a distinction between Egypt and Israel. You will know that you are different from the world when you believe in the blood and, and, and Jesus Christ died, died for you on the cross. Verse seven said, then you will know that you are different. True repentance, separation from the world. Yeah. God said, I want to separate my people, Amen. Israel from, I want to separate Israel from Egypt. Amen. Amen. That's, that's Amen. good. Hey, somebody had a question. I just wanted to answer before you go, Jerron. It's uh, from Vicki Marie. You know, if anybody got questions about this topic here, we don't mind once in a while stopping it, you know, answering your questions since it's since it's flowing with what we're saying, what what God is saying, not us, because we believe God gave us this topic. It says, but what if they know what they are doing? What she says, uh, what if they know what they are doing? Basically, she's saying, what if they know what they're doing is wrong? I forgive them. I just don't want to be around them. But just like Jeremy said, you, don't, you can forgive somebody truly from your heart and you only know if you forgave them or not in God. But then you don't have to associate with them. There's people I forgive. I, as I search my heart, I have no bitterness. I have no anger uh, uh, towards nobody. I have a holy anger towards sin, but I don't have no unforgiveness. Okay. And I could genuinely say that. And, you know, God is watching me. Um, I don't have no unforgiveness or, or bitterness towards anybody, but I do not associate with them. I forgave them, but I just can't. I can't work with you. I can't associate with you. I can't eat dinner with you. But right. I, I, I forgive. I, so it is possible to forgive somebody, but not be friends with them. So I hope right. that answers your question. Well, you, you, you just to build on it a little more. Yes, you don't have to be around them, but make sure you really forgave them. That's though. right. From the heart. Because I've seen people mm, say they really forgave people and they really didn't. Mm. Come on. Here's a surefire way that'll help you understand if you forgave them or not. Pray for them. Mm -hmm. Pray that they repent and turn away from what it is that they're doing is wrong. It's hard to hate someone that you're praying for. Amen. That's right. Mm. Make sure that you're praying for them because I've seen people deceive themselves and say, oh, I forgave them. I just don't want nothing to do with them. And you right. don't forgave nothing. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're still just as bitter to the core as can be That's real. just just it, it, for you not for them for you your salvation because the word of god says that if we don't forgive we will not be forgiven amen, nope. amen. so pray for them it's hard to hate someone that you're praying for amen
Amen. It's true. So, so I just want to go with something basic. I want to run back to the beginning. And and um, I was gonna build on that anyways. I actually got some scriptures for Vicky, some 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 powerful scriptures the Lord led me to earlier. If you're still here, um, but I just want to lay a basic foundation really quickly because some would say that this is really basic information, but you'd be surprised how many people really don't know. Mm. I run into people at work and I hear them as I pass through the halls saying stupid things such as, "Hey man, just do it and just repent later." Mm. Right. Sin now, repent later. I just heard this two weeks ago actually at work. Mm. I stopped. And went over there and addressed them. That's right. And explained to them that the mere, listen, by the simple fact that you just said that out of your mouth tells me that you have no clue what repentance is. Amen. You don't even have control over it. Let me lay a foundation here. All right. What repentance isn't is saying sorry 50 times and still doing the same thing. That's what repentance is not. Mm, come on. That's right. Okay. Amen. If you premeditate sin and say, I'm going to go fornicate and then repent later. You have no clue what repentance is. Amen. Blessings, Amen. Sister Candace. Blessings, uh, Pauline Gray. Tori, we appreciate you. God bless all you guys. It's God good bless. God bless. But if you premeditate sin and you think that you have that much control to just turn around, you have no clue what repentance is. Mm. Repentance is a change of mind and a change of heart that leads to a change of action and lifestyle. It is dictated and pushed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit that does it. You cannot be, you cannot truly genuinely repent of anything unless you're convicted of sin by the Holy Ghost. That's right. You won't repent unless you're convicted of sin. Mm -hmm. This is why it's imperative for the man and woman of God when they preach the gospel, we must come against sin. Of course, as you're led by the Holy Spirit, we don't want to bash anybody out of our flesh. Okay. Right. <clears throat> but we need to be led by the Holy Ghost. Repentance is initiated by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. Mm, and that's one of his Amen. jobs. That's one of Holy Spirit's jobs. OK, so repentance is a change of mind, a change of heart that leads to a change of lifestyle. Now, I want to address something that Brother Lewis said mm -hmm. that's really powerful, but people don't understand it. All right. And I'm going to go to Romans 12, where he says, people say I repent every day. And he says, why do you got to repent every day? I think maybe they worded it wrong. I want to read a verse and then explain on it. You shouldn't be repenting of the same sin over and over. That's right. Again. Come on. All right. But when I say I repent daily, it's a different thing. It doesn't mean that I'm doing sin. Remember right. what we said. Part of repentance is a change of mind. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. A part of repentance is a change of mind. Check this out and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm. Every time your mind is renewed through God's word and his truth, you're repenting. Mm. Because you're changing, your mind is changing every time your mind is renewed in the scriptures. Mm. Amen. Amen. Every time I get a new revelation <clears throat> of Jesus Christ, every time I get a new revelation of something that I shouldn't be doing or something that I should turn away from so that I can continue to grow and increase in holiness mm. and be more like Christ, that is a repentance. Right. <clears throat> I'm turning. My mind is changing. Now, Brother Jeremy said they were snatched out of Egypt. See, here's their problem. Yes, God delivered them out of Egypt, but Egypt was still in them. Right. We need to be changed by the inside, by the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We need Holy Ghost to convict us so that we can truly, genuinely repent. Amen. 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 That was God's heart. God's, oh yeah, a hundred percent. They came out of, they came out of Egypt. They were all circumcised, but God, God said, you, you, you shed your blood for me, but you're not keeping your covenant. That's why God said, I'm going to shed my blood for you. And I will never, ever, never, yes. ever break my covenant with you. I mean, David was was one of the only guys that 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 got mad because you uncircumcised Philistine. He took it seriously. He said, "If you're circumcised, you have to fall. You're 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 totally sold out to Christ." So, uh, yes, uh, they were not sold out. To, but God's heart, God's heart for true repentance was get out of Egypt. He was telling Pharaoh, he said, get out of Egypt. My only goal, if you read uh, Exodus, when they were uh, all the plagues, the, the flies mm. and, the, and the bug, God's only heart to Pharaoh was like, I'm going to send another plague on you to drive my people out of sin. I want them. To, why didn't God say, give them a couple of days off to worship in Egypt? He mm. said, I want them to go to the desert. Get out of here. And That's get right. out of Egypt. True repentance is leaving, like Gerard said, not only leaving Egypt, but Leaving Egypt means leaving Egypt. They actually right. walked Here. out of yes. Egypt, Praise walking God. out. Like, you know, what comes to my mind? A lot of people say, you know what? I'm going to change my location and start all over. Uh, do you nothing. can't, you can't leave in Egypt. Like Gerard change. said. Yeah, <clears throat> right. It's a, what did, what did, um, oh, that's what did good, my man, 
What did what did Stephen tell the uh, Pharisees as they were stoning him? You uncircumcised, you stiff necked, <laughs> circum circumcised, right. uh, 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 uncircumcised heart. You were still circumcised. Stiff neck. You did the action. You did the action of carrying your Bible and, and walking to another state, walking to church every week. But you are circum. You're uncir. He called them uncircumcised because they did not keep their commitment. So you can leave the state and try to start all over. But like Gerard said, if Egypt is not out, true repentance is getting Egypt out of you. And God's That's right. God's God's only desire was, I want my people out of Egypt. I want them out so they can worship me. Mm. If you really want to worship God, leave Egypt, leave your sins, uh, 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 consecrate yourself, Amen. set yourself apart. Verse Beautiful. seven says, then you will know there's a difference between Jeremy and the world. You can, yes. you can put yourself in there. Then you will know. Once you separate yourself, then you can call in God's name. Say, God, I challenge you. God, I put you to your word. Mm. Gerard just read the verse. It's Romans 12. Then you can attest and prove what God then. Knowing of then, your mind. Then. Oh, oh, only then. And that is something that I'm working on. Uh, Everybody. Uh, hardcore. This is nothing that we're just talking about. And, we're So go ahead. And just to offer an encouragement really quick. I won't take long, though. Is is. Oh, don't always re don't always expect a perfect repentance outright. Right. Lou, uh, 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 Brother Lewis here, he, he, he ministered last night. He preached a powerful word about, yes, you could come up here. You can pray all you want. Let me say this. A sinner's prayer don't change nobody. Come on. A sinner's prayer don't save nobody. I got to post that. That's right. Mm. A sinner's prayer don't save no nobody. nobody. Are you genuine? Don't I'm going to read a verse to you. All right, I'm going to read a verse to you. What, what uh, Jeremy just basically said with Egypt, them leaving Egypt and still struggling. See, it all ties together. Here's the problem. They were out of Egypt, but Egypt was still in them. Mm. But see, sometimes that'll happen when God saves you. But this is why the process of the renewing of your mind, spending time in the secret face, place, building Amen. a relationship with God is so important. Like Brother Lewis preached last night. That's Powerful right. word he preached. All right. It does, listen, you could come up to this altar, but if you don't pursue God, nothing's going to happen in your life. Nothing is going to change. Nothing. So, yes, your, your repentance may not be perfect, but let me ask you a question. I'll just read it. The Bible Amen. talks better than I do. Amen. Okay. John chapter 12, verse 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hates his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. Let me ask you a question, saints. That thing that you're repenting of, do you hate it? Mm. Amen. Egypt, do you hate Egypt or do you mm, still love on. Egypt? Mm. Come on. Do you hate your sin? That's how you know. I'm not talking about if you're still, you can struggle with something and hate it. See, as long as you hate it, that means that your nature has changed. That's you're becoming right. like Christ. You're becoming yeah. like God when you hate sin and you hate the world. See, this is where we got to get, right? right? Because look, even though they were out of Egypt, Jeremy, you remember when things started to get tough in the wilderness? God oh. delivered them. He did all those things. And, mm. and then what did they start to do? They started to reminisce about Egypt. You remember when we was in Egypt and we had the onion pills and mm. so on and so forth to eat? Come on. And some people do that now. You remember when we was in the world? We used to go to the club and, and hang out and party. We had a good time. I don't remember a good time. Mm. Mm. I remember bondage. Right. Yeah. I remember the devil with his foot on my neck. Come on. I remember hopelessness. That's what I remember. Amen. I don't remember a good time. Repentance is a change of mind and a change of heart. Yeah, See, nice. when those things happen, then your environment, mm. your people, places, and your things begin to change. You don't mm. got to cut people off. All you got to do is grow in Christ and they fall off. Right. Yeah. You don't always need to change your location. I don't need to move to California. Has your heart changed? Come on. Right. That's right. 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 Have you changed? Have you grown? Have you drawn closer to the Lord? <clears throat> Go ahead. Amen. I'm sorry if I took long. No, you didn't take long because you set me off for something as, awesome. as you were, as you were speaking, like a word jumped in my spirit. It, 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 and this just um, helped the people out as well. You know, first Corinthians six seventeen says, but the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Come on. So, so if the things that God Amen. hates, Good I word. should hate that as well. If I'm one spirit with him, come on somebody, yeah. the things yeah. that the, the Lord true. loves and the things that he's pleased with, come on, then I somebody. should be pleased with that too. Yes. You know, a lot of people, um, they call me uh, judgmental through Facebook, all, all over the place. Oh, you judgmental, you, you're a Pharisee, because I stand for holiness. And, and, and if you're one spirit with the Lord, the Bible, look what God said. He said, I'm angry with the wicked. What is, what is it, once a month? Once no, a week? All the time. Every, Every day. day. Not... He's angry with, not with the people, but, but with the sin. You know, he's real angry. If sin does not make you angry, like what these brothers are saying, we mm. should really just examine ourselves and say, am I really one? 
with, with the Lord Jesus Christ. I might go to church. Yeah. I might have did a sinner's prayer. I might even read my Bible, but I'm really one with the Lord because you become one, one with the Lord when you spend time with him and, and, and you put it into you put the scriptures into practice. That's yeah. what makes you one with the Lord. But then you get the strength to put the scriptures in, in practice when you spend time with Jesus, when you when you worship him, when you connect with his presence. That's right. Because, because you can't put the scriptures into practice in your flesh because the word of God is spirit. Amen. So you can't do it in your flesh. The Bible even says it's not by your power. It's not by your might. It's only by his power. It's only by the power of the Holy Ghost. Even on this podcast, this, this podcast will have no anointing on it. These are just be empty, dry words without without the presence of God, without the anointing of the living God, without the Holy Spirit. Nobody gets penetrated. Nobody gets pricked. That's yeah. why Jesus was so anointed. The Bible said he spoke with power and he had authority. He had both of those because he knew how to connect with the father before he will minister. Come on. Amen. It was, yeah. I forgot where it was in the Bible, but it said uh, Jesus saw the multitude coming. So it said he withdrew. Basically, he went to the secret place first. And then right. he started to lay hands on the people. Many people do it backwards. They want to lay hands and cast out devils, but their secret place right. is vacant. They don't spend no one-on-one -on -one time with God. Come on, somebody. And, and, so we, we got to be real careful of that. So, um, but yeah. Got amen. It. Go ahead. All right. Well, I just want to kind of mind just, just, uh, just to drive the point of separating yourself and putting God first. He, a couple of verses in the New Testament say Ephesians, Hebrews 12 says, um, it says, uh, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a cloud of witness, let us yes. throw off everything. Come let on. us throw off everything mm. that everything. hinders us and the sin Just that something. so easily entangles us. Come on. Um, uh, let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So, so that so that means things are going to go bad for us, so or or good for us. And a lot of times it goes bad because God wants to shape you. So he, he says, he says, put off, put off whatever entangles you. I can't read it. Put off whatever entangles you so easily and hinders you and mm. entangles you. And, and, and breaking up a little bit, Jer. Jer. Or Gerard didn't call me to pray. So. Huh? What do I got to do with this? <laughs> we all. <laughs> so, Jerry, you're breaking up. You're breaking up, Galvano. <laughs> he might break out in a second. Father, please fix his internet in Jesus' yes, name. Yes, in Jesus' name. Come on, Lord. Fix it. I review. Oh, am I? It's still frozen, Jerry. I'm just kidding. Uh, no, still, no, still. Um, hold that thought. Uh, Hold am, on, I good now? am I no. good? Am I good now? No, we didn't get anything no. you just said for the still last frozen? two minutes. Yeah, well, you're still frozen. Well, I can hear you uh, a little bit, but your uh, face is. Okay. Well, why don't you guys go ahead? I'll reset my stuff. All right. Okay, go ahead. Reset it. Reset it. Reset it real quick. We're going to get. Hold on, Jerry. You're moving now. Yeah, Wait. now you're moving. Now. <laughs> All right. Well, praise God. We won't be hindered. Um, Amen. Back. You're back. You're back. Okay. okay. Is he okay. back? A little okay. bit. I don't see you, Jerry. No. I see him. It's just a little, it's just a, um, a little bit slow. Okay. Well, I really, slow. Want, I really wanted to hear what he That's had cool. to say. Me too. Well, just, you know, you can go on without me. Huh? I know I'm important. No, we can't go on without Am you. I on again or no? No, I'm saying, am I, am I back well, on it? Am I back on? Not your video, but your audio, yes. Okay, yeah. No, I was reading on Hebrews 12. Okay, well, okay. why don't you go ahead and I'll just reset it. All right, praise God. Yeah. Lou, you well, praise go? God. Yeah, yeah, well, praise God for all those, once again, joining us. Um, we just want to acknowledge you guys. If you have a question, um, you could drop it in here. But later on, we're going to open up the Zoom so you guys can jump into the chat room. Uh, Jasmine, my wife, of course, says, lacking secret place, the lacking in the secret place is dangerous. We must be filled in order to pour out. That's right. Amen. You ain't got nothing to pour out. You're going to pour out your flesh if you, you don't spend time with God. Are you giving them his flesh? That's right. Amen. Nicole says, well, and then Tori says, right. Amen. She Come says, on, repeating somebody. and repeating like they are talking about. You're not repeating. Amen. So basically, we're just talking about tr true repentance. You know, uh, when you when you have true repentance, I remember the first time I truly repented from unforgiveness and, and, and bitterness that I was holding on to when I was fresh out of the world. The moment I did, I'll never forget. It felt like a million pounds lifted off of me. 
you know, I, I just sensed a, a peace that I never experienced before. So if some of you viewing here, some of you might be in this chat room. You might say, wow, like I keep sensing that there's a heaviness upon me. You know, you don't want the heaviness there. You got to really ask yourself, have I truly forgiven that one person that did me real wrong? You know, they, they did me so wrong. They did me so dirty. You might have confessed it with your mouth. But like what Brother Jariah said earlier, did you truly forgive that person? You know, when you when you see that person, when you come across that person, what, does something rise up in you still? That's mm -hmm. well, that's one way when you think when somebody brings that person's name up, does something rise in you still? Or, or do you have the love of Christ towards them? And that's easier said than done. But the best way to do it, even by by experience and by what, what the word of God says, and even what Jariah said is so true. If you can't forgive somebody and you sense that little the, f the flesh rising up when somebody brings that person's name up, yep. pray for that person. Yep. The moment you pray for that person, you invite God into the scene. You, you invite God into the situation and then you can start to flow with the love of Christ because it, it's something that supernaturally has to be done. You yeah. see, and that's something I, I, I did. In my, like I said, in my, when I speak, I like to speak with um, personal experiences. So there was one experience where I didn't like a lot of people. At one of the jobs I worked. But okay. then I start I started to pray for these people. Right. And, and when I would walk through, I saw the love of Christ. I just sense the love of Christ flowing out. And then the Holy Ghost will remind you, forgive them for they don't know what they do. They're lost. They're blind. You know, they need to repent, you know, so you, you just got to show mercy and, and, and compassion upon others. And it all starts with prayer. It starts with the Lord. It starts with, with, with connecting with him. We, we can't forgive people. I can't. There's some, I can't forgive people. Lewis can't forgive people. But when I invite Jesus on the scene, he gives me the strength and I'm no longer right. operating in, in the flesh. We got to learn to operate in the spirit. But you can't That's operate right. in the spirit if you're not connected with, with the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. That's right. And I, and I have, a, uh, yeah, well, I'm back. So, um, no, yeah. Right. He said, he said a couple of things that, um, that, that may shift it a little bit because there's no, there's no shame. There's no shame in actually repenting. A lot of times people, um, they're shameful. Hey, I'm, I'm sinning. I don't want to admit that I'm sinning. And, there, and there's a deception out there that that what it's embarrassing or right. or God's not a, God's not going to accept me. He's going to reject me. I'm ba I'm too bad. Um, I've gone too far, whatever it is. And and I don't think we understand that Jesus died in the cross for our sin. He he Amen. proved to us with his blood. There's no other sacrifice that someone could have made. So I love you. So a lot of times people are embarrassed to say I'm uh, um it shouldn't be a um, an embarrassing thing to say I repent. I've backslidden for for five or six months. Mm -hmm. I want to read a verse that um, came to my mind as he was uh, actually wrote down, John twenty one, that God loves God loves the lost. He loves the the backslidden. There's no shame in saying um, mm -hmm. I backslid for five months. I backslid for whatever. I straight up slipped out of the way. Oh, and um, a lot of times we're just too embarrassed and, and, and then we hide it. And then we don't just say, I repent. I repent of my sins. And so after Jesus died on the cross, he came back to his disciple. If you read John 20 and 21, he came back to his disciples three, uh, three times. The disciples were eating and, and, and it says his disciples were, they locked the door because they were scared of the Jews. So all of a sudden their faith drops. And then a little lower said, and Jesus appeared to him again. He walked mm. through the locked doors and appeared to him, appeared to him again. And then yeah. in, in 21, it says afterwards, John 21, verse one, afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples three times. Mm. He's going after people who he loves that should have been really embarrassed, seen signs, seen wonders. And wow. People should have been real embarrassed. You know, I'm a pastor. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a leader. I can't, you know, I can't admit that I, whatever did right. something real bad, uh, whatever you want to say you did. I can't admit. And the devil, the devil entangles you with mm. pride and you get further and further away. You hide your sin. You're dying. Wow. So look what, look what Jesus did. Jesus, Jesus went after the lost, the people who, who should have been embarrassed, the people who were safe for 10 years. And all of a sudden there's no shame in falling. Jesus, Jesus in 2021 20, said afterward, Jesus appeared to his disciples again. And it happened this way. And then verse um, 14, it says, and this was the third time he appeared to his disciples. He goes to Peter and says, Peter, you're fishing right now. And you have everyone following you. Everyone's fishing with you. You're mm. not fishing for men anymore. And what does he tell? Everyone knows. What does, he, what does he tell Peter three times? He says, he says, um, he says, Jesus said, Simon, Peter, Simon, 
do you love me? Mm. He said, yes, huh. feed my, feed my lambs. He said, do you love me? He said, yes, feed my, uh, feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. He said, do you love me? He said, stop. Ask me if I love you. <laughs> he said, feed, if you love me, feed, my, get back on track. That's right. God loves, look at the, uh, other stories. God leaves the 99 and goes after the one. There is no shame in repenting. God loves when you, when you not lie and say, I'm not doing, God loves when you're truthful and you say, you know what I did? I did fall. I did mm -hmm. fall. And, um, it just, <clears throat> maybe someone needs to hear that, that there, there is no shame oh, in God. saying, I repent. There is mm -hmm. no same shame in saying, God, I am going to follow you again. Jesus, even Jesus went after his disciples three times. Jesus mm. Christ. He didn't say you guys should have, you guys shouldn't have made a mistake. You guys fell. Now I see people think that God's a tit for tat God. If you do bad after a year, then God says, Oh, you're my bad list. No, God, God is. So just how God physically ran after his disciples three times when you sin and you backslide, God is always at your door knocking mm. every second, every day he's yeah, knocking true. And, and like the prodigal son, don't believe the lie. God is waiting with, with his arms wide open for you to Amen. truly repent. He loves the loss. That's right. Amen. That's right. Um, I would say, I hope you're not ashamed to repent because without repentance, there can be no salvation. Mm -hmm. Repentance is a door to salvation. It's, it's, it, it leads to salvation. You need to repent. And, and here's my thing. Don't worry about what other people think. If that's you, I'm just following the flow here. Don't worry about it because here's the thing. I'm not accountable to anybody. I'm accountable to God. The Bible says it's appointed unto man to die and then judgment. I'm going to stand before God. So you got some people that have grown lukewarm, um, that have shifted, but they're still trying to put on the front mm -hmm. for other people as if God doesn't see it anyway. Listen, the word of God says a righteous man falls seven times and get back up again. It's not the fall that makes him righteous, but it's the desire and willingness to get back up and repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me, Father. Forgive me, Lord, as much Amen. as you can be convicted. But you want to avoid that as much as you can. Because what happens is the more you play with sin, your conscience becomes more and more seared. Come on. So mm -hmm. the first time it will be terrible. It'll feel like you murdered someone, whatever it is. But mm -hmm. then as you go on, if you continue to play in that thing, you won't be so much convicted for it anymore. It'll start to lessen and lessen and lessen and lessen. Yeah. And yeah. Lessen till you can no longer be convicted. Like brother Jeremy said, listen, if you fall, there's no shame in that. Who cares what other people say? There's no shame in that return unto your father. He's there with open arms. He loves you. God's desire is that no man should perish. That all should come unto repentance. Mm -hmm. That's Amen. God's desire. That's his heart. It says that I believe in second Peter. That's God's desire. He doesn't want anyone to perish, but all to come unto repentance. You know where the Lord led me today as I was reading and praying in the secret place? He led me to Jonah, mm -hmm. of all places, about repentance. Jonah. This is a part of the reason why forgiving others is so important as well, especially if you're a minister and a child of God. Because what happens is, number one, God won't forgive you. Number one, it says, forgive your brothers so that you can be forgiven. But number two, what will happen is, you'll start believing in your mind that God don't like them people either. Oh. Mm. That he's against them too. Amen. You'll start praying against them. You'll start wishing that you don't, you won't even want them to repent or be saved, but you want mercy from God though. Come you on. want forgiveness from God, but you won't want that for them. And that's what Jonah wow. did. Mm. He said, Jonah, go to Nineveh and preach. Come on. And Jonah said, no, nah, I don't like them, bro. Mm. He says, I'm not going to preach because I know you. You're slow to anger and you're quick to forgive. They're mm. going to repent. I'm not going to repeat because they're going to repent and you're going to forgive them. I'm not going. Mm. And you know what he did? He ran from the presence of the Lord. It says Jonah chapter one, read it. If you didn't read Jonah, it's a short book. It's not long. It says he fled the presence of the Lord. And each time it says he went down, 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 down. Every time he fled the presence, when mm. you flee the presence and the will of God over your life, you always go down. You don't go up. Amen. You always go down. You don't go up. So he fled the presence of the Lord. He was actually ready to die rather than go preach to those people so that God can forgive him. Mm. He mm. would have rather died. Right. That's how crazy unforgiveness wow. is. You need to forgive people. I'm going to just read a little bit of it out of uh, Jonah chapter three. Check this out. This was after he got swallowed up by the fish and he was spit out on dry land. This was after the storm on a boat, everything. This was after all that. We're just fast forwarding to chapter three and it says, 
And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. Listen, the word don't change. Mm, that's right. You run from the presence of the Lord, you mess up, so on and so forth, but you come back around because, listen, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance, saints. Amen. Just because you messed it up the second time, listen, you can come back around. But guess what? And it, it's still going to be the same thing he said the first time. Listen to what he said the second time. And it said the second time saying, arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach. Mm. The same thing he told him the first time. He said, go to Nineveh and preach. All right. And it says, so Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. So it took a long way. It's a very wicked city, very evil people, very evil. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, on, and said yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. He warned him, God's going to destroy this city. You people mm -hmm. are evil. The word of the Lord is going to destroy this city. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast mm -hmm. and put on sackcloth from greatest of them to the least. Mm -hmm. For word came unto the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and he laid his robe from him and covered himself with sackcloth and ashes. Mm -hmm. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through the Nineveh by the decree of the nobles saying, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water. That's repentance. And let mm. man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily mm. unto God. Yeah, let them turn. This is repentance right here. Let them turn everyone oh. from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and mm. repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? Mm. It goes on and says, and God saw their works. Faith without works is dead. Let me say that. That's Come on. Right. You I say, I repent of my sins. Okay, well, show me. Right. I repent. I don't want to smoke crack no more. I bring it. Listen, a lady said last night she didn't want to smoke crack anymore. Amen. And she says we were ministering last night and she right. said she picked up her bag and a pipe and some crack fell out. And she said, mm. I took it and put it in crushed my bag it. and I stumped on it. And I crushed yeah, it. Praise God. And she said, I came here tonight and heard you guys minister. Something Amen. changed. See, that's where. Listen, she didn't want to do it. But she put something behind it. Come on, somebody. Amen. Listen. So he saw their works that they turned from their evil way and God repented of the evil that he said he would do unto them. And he did mm. it not. They were saved because of repentance, because the man wouldn't. How could they hear unless there's a preacher? Amen. Amen. Right, man. But listen, you don't have listen. You don't have any more right to forgiveness that anybody else does. I don't care if you don't like them. Mm -hmm. Don't Come matter on. if you don't like them. God loves them. He died for them. That's right. He had the nerve. He was ready to die rather than go preach repentance to these people because he didn't like them. He was literally ready to die mm. so that they can perish. Be careful with that unforgiveness, man. Check your heart. Yeah. I mean, seriously, Amen. check your heart. Amen. That's right. You know, there's a scripture I wanted to bring up. Um, you know, a lot of times people say, well, I told, you know, God to forgive me, which is scriptural. You know, I told, I told God to forgive me. Right. But let, let's go to James. Let's go to James 5. Uh, 16. What now? Watch this because like, I think Jeremy brought it up. People can hide, like a lot of uh, pastors or ministers do pride. And what, what does the Bible say? Pride comes before a fall. Mm -hmm. That's why you see many, let many leaders who you thought were on fire for the Lord, you see them falling down. You know, the, it, 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 it's, it's dead all around in a lot of our church buildings in these last days because of hidden sin. J James 5 16 says this now. Now we know about telling God to forgive me, but look what this says confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. And they didn't say God right there. Some sins you got to confess to one another. Some, some people you've you done dirty for years. Some people you have unforgiveness and, and, and bitterness towards. We might be stealing from some people. You might have stole from a lot of people. And you say, God, forgive me from stealing from them. But did you go to that person and make it, make it right with them? That's did right. you go confess your sins to them and say, listen, That's I right. slept with your wife and you don't know about it. I mean, you, mm. you let me live with you. But when your money was gone, I was the one that was taking your money. Yeah, yeah, I told God to forgive me, but I never made it right with you, though. Please forgive me. And I promise if you do that, your sense, like I said in the beginning, your sense of a billion pounds come off of you. And it is, yeah. tough. it is tough. But that's but just it, something we got to face up. And are, it, are you going to continue to hide? Because 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 when you hide, there was those devils like to hide. But when you yeah. shed light, they're like little roaches. You know, mm. they start to run. They, <laughs> they, they run. They start to manifest. They don't like that light shed on them. You know, yeah. so um, yeah. look what it says. Confess your sins to each other. And then what you, you, you pray for one another. That's you right. know, so we don't want to be we don't want to um, 
just say, oh, I told God to forgive me. It's like a cop out in a way. I'm not saying every single yeah, sin, yeah. some sins you just go to God, but then you got to discern yeah. that. If you don't sense peace in your in your inner in your spirit, yeah. that's because you got to go to that person and make it right, you know. Yeah. So don't don't wait forever. Yeah. Right. Amen. But David, I mean, when David was approached, that's good. He was told, he was like, You're that man that said, you're that man that killed that person. He could have easily, easily right. excused his way out of it. But he he ate the he ate the um he ate the prophecy from the Lord. He ate it, and this was after though that God was like, "You're gonna run from your, uh, you're gonna always run from the sword. Your wife's gonna be disgraced in public." When he mm -hmm. sinned, he ate it, and he said, "I have sinned before the Lord." He didn't. Um, Saul said, "The people, the people wanted me to do it." So David had a great heart of That's right. of eating it and saying, "I, you know what? I mean." A lot of times I do something to these guys here. I will embarrass them or whatever. The old, the old Jeremy comes out and, and I have to go to them and say, listen, God, I'm sorry for that. Right. It hurts. Amen. But right when I do it, there's a huge, because the devil wants to lie to you and say, don't do it. Cause, because then, then it makes you look smaller. Please right. make me look smaller. because I want God to be greater in my life. I want to look smaller, but your flesh, your flesh immediately says, don't do it. But when you do it, you defeat the devil and you please God and grit and, and, and when God's pleased, he's back in your life mm -hmm. uh, Amen. working Amen. for you. But um, Amen. I did want to say one uh, thing, but go ahead, Gerard. Uh, I'm going to well, 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 uh, I'm gonna just build with you, man. Let's let's read that verse. That's yeah. that's very powerful. It's a powerful illustration of repentance. David, that's why God said he was a man after his own heart. It wasn't just mm -hmm. a worship aspect. It was right. his willingness to maintain his relationship and good mm -hmm. standing with God. That was the difference between him and Saul. Saul just cared about the, the throne, the title and the praises and the love mm. of the people. Come he on. didn't really care about relationship with God. He didn't really care mm. about God's presence over his life. He didn't really care about the anointing. He didn't really right. care about being in right standing with God. David did. Mm. Yes, he stumbled, he fell, but guess what? He got up. So yeah, when the man of God sense. came to him and preached and said, you are that man, let's read the man of God's, uh, let's read his response. This is how children of God respond when they are convicted, when they are confronted with sin in their life. This is how mm. we respond. Look at this. And David said, this is, this is second Samuel chapter 12, verse 13. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Let's look at that for a minute. He didn't say I sinned against Uriah, even though he mm. did. Right. He didn't say I sinned mm. against Beersheba, even though he did. He said, I sinned against the Lord because he knows that that's who he was accountable to. Mm. He knows that that's who elevated him from a shepherd boy. Mm. He knows that that's who had favor and grace over his life, who delivered him from the bear and the lion and, 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 and Goliath. He knows that that's who loved him. He says, I've sinned against the Lord. Mm. All right. Amen. And Nathan said unto David, check this out. Look at the response. He didn't make an excuse like Jeremy said. He actually Jesus. was the king. He probably had soldiers in that room. He could have had that prophet right. killed. Mm, true. Good he could have had him mm -hmm. killed. Who are you right. talking to like that? Do you know right. who I am? Now that wouldn't work out very well, but check it out. Listen, right. he says, I sinned against the Lord and Nathan said unto David, the Lord has put away your sin. You won't die. Mm. Um, Just because he, well, amen. your response matters to the conviction. Listen, Amen. your response to the conviction matters. When mm -hmm. a man of God comes and preaches the word and the Holy Spirit convicts you, your response mm -hmm. matters. Yeah. It's not enough. Listen, Amen. being convicted of sin doesn't do anything if you don't respond properly. Amen. You mm -hmm. have to respond. You have to respond and you have to get on your knees, get on your face and repent to a holy and righteous God that loves you. And it's not even as difficult as it was. He paved the way. The price was already paid, just like Lewis said. And to build on what Lewis said, okay? Where you confess your sins to other people. There's healing in that. Amen. But also, listen, some of you need to learn how to receive forgiveness as well mm -hmm. and forgive yourself for things that you have done. Because listen, Amen. in that repentance and that forgiveness and salvation is your healing. You don't always need someone to lay hands on you. That's right. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. When he came to the man that was paralyzed, did he say rise up and walk or did he say your sins are forgiven? That's right. Sins. He said your sins are forgiven, right? Mm -hmm. And he was able to get up and walk. That's Sometimes right. that sin is what's keeping you paralyzed. That's right. Spiritually and physically, because you bought into the condemnation and the lies of the devil that says Come you on. deserve to be here. Mm. Come on. 
You deserve mm. to be sick. You deserve to be stuck. You deserve to be locked up. You deserve everything. You deserve that she left. You deserve that he left. You deserve that the kids oh. disrespect you. You deserve what's going on in your life. That's a lie from the mm. pit of hell. Wow. That's right. I got some. Yeah. Ooh, I'm because yes, one. maybe you do deserve yeah. it, but guess who paid the price? Oh, mm. man. Amen. Guess who paid for it? So yeah. now if you're in Christ, there's no more condemnation. Let me tell Amen. you something. Your healing, you don't even need somebody to lay hands on you. Your healing is in receiving the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. That was deep. Mm. Yeah, that was oh, deep. I receive yeah. it. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Praise yes, God. Father. Listen, yeah, you can now get up and walk. You're not paradise spiritually anymore. Some of you have been hindered for a long time. You know your destiny and you can't walk in it because you're hanging on to something that you did last week and yesterday. Let it go. You're forgiven. Mm. Yeah, no more Let hindrances listen just like jesus told him jesus didn't say anything he didn't say rise up and walk be healed may your legs be healed he says no your sins are forgiven you Amen. and the man was able to get up and he was able to walk he was able to move i'm telling you right now if you're in christ your sins have been forgiven you get up walk Amen. move do That's something right. Get out of that Amen. bed. Stop staying in the same Praise place. God. Stop dealing with those same people. Your sins are forgiven. forgiven. You. Get up and walk. Amen. 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 Um, I have to tap. I got to tap in on that Amen. real quick um, about the in the realm of forgiving other. What's our what's our attitude when others tr treat us bad? It goes what. What, 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 they, what they both said when da David did not, like, Jonah didn't blame the people. Uh, David did not blame Bathsheba. He could have, he could have blamed Bathsheba and said she came because you know, the Bible does say she came to him also. Right. She came. So a lot of times do we have the better. attitude of um, when others treat us bad, whether it's, whether we do something wrong to them and we're at fault or they're hundred percent at fault and they do something bad to us, forgiving others, that can turn into bitterness. Listen to this real quick. That can turn into bitterness if we don't see that God could be allowing that to shape us. Mm, so we could be on. like, we could be like that person. Let's just go for a physical act, whatever. That person broke into my house, stole everything. And all of a sudden you could be bitter for weeks and weeks and weeks at that person. Mm. But are we looking at it as, um, uh, uh, where God is working at it in us. A lot. So when someone does us wrong, that could turn into bitterness. Or do we look at it as that, that situation, God, if God allows everything, maybe we, maybe he's testing us. Can Jeremy, can Jeremy, um, can Jeremy handle a break in? Can Jeremy, can Jeremy handle a punch in the face? Can mm. Jeremy handle someone just cursing the day he was born, cursing everything he owns, right. cursing him? Can Jeremy handle that? Now is forgiving others like, like what we're on right now that can turn into bitterness. If we don't see that God may be doing a work in us. Mm. If we turn it, if we keep saying that person treating me wrong, that per, I'm going to forgive right. that. Why can't we look at it? As, and you know what it reminds me of uh, Joseph when his brothers betrayed him, look at Joseph's attitude. He could have got bitter at them and could have said, they did me wrong. They sold me out, but he looked, Check out, check out how he forgave. Check out how easy it was for for, to him for to forgive his brothers because he did not mm. look at it as somebody treating him bad. Listen, to this real clear. He did not look at this is how I look at my situations and look at your situations this way. He did not look at it as someone treating him bad. Mm. He looked at it as how was God shaping me with that with that jerk of a person with that blank of a person right. why am i fighting against flesh and blood or am i fighting against spirit of power? is everything that Come god on, has a, in my life is god a lot does god let things go does does does, lot, does god let things slip, slip, slip through his fingers if if somebody treats you terribly do you say what is what is god's what is god's moving this and 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 that will save you from bitterness because don't think that that person hates you think that i need that because it shapes mm. me Check, okay. check us out. Look at Genesis 50. This is what, this is what Joseph's response was. Uh, Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead. And he said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for what we did to him? Mm. He had every right. They treated him like, they, they treated him like crap. They treated him like they, they lie. They pretty much killed him and lied to his father for the, for his whole life. He, he could, um, that, his brothers, his brothers were 100% right with thinking that would have been Joseph's response. Let me get him back. 
I'm going to stay in, I'm going to stay in, but Joseph, look, look at Joseph's response here. This, this changed my way of looking at situations. Joseph mm. said this, but Joseph said to them, don't be in a phrase. Uh, don't be, uh, oh, sorry. Don't be afraid. I am in a place of God. Come on. You intended to harm me, but God mm. intended it. For good, for the good on, somebody to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Hmm. Every situation you can be bitter at that That's dude, good. a Ralph Raphael, or or whoever's name it, 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 you're, you're thinking about right now, or you could say that person's in my life to shape me to see what God to see who God wants me to be. E, a, a situation, so a situation can easily turn you bitter. Yeah. Or you could say God is allowing this. He's a, what? Okay. So what if, what if, what if Joseph didn't take it as mm. God is allowing this to happen to me? That's good. He wouldn't have been, he wouldn't have been who God wanted him to be. If you don't take it as God is shaping you, why people are mistreating you. That's an easy way to forgive others. Cause don't look at it as, don't look at it as flesh and blood. Look at it as God is trying to shape me. Look, look who Joseph would have missed out being if he lived in bitterness he, he, he instead said it, he instead had the attitude of God allowed this to happen to me. So God would have his purpose and, and he created me who I am today. Mm. That's, Amen. Don't turn, don't, don't turn how people treat you into bitterness. Say, right. say, how is God shaping me? Any situation you're in, I lost my car, my job mm. is not say, say, how is God shaping me? God intended this, the devil intended it for evil, but I'm not going to be bitter. Like, like, like we already started saying about forgiving other things, forgiving. I'm not going to be bitter. I'm going to see how God is shaping me. Mm. Amen. Amen. Yeah, go ahead. I, I got a, a scripture, as you know, the brothers were talking here, you know, in Mark 11, 25, sometimes we, you know, we pray, we always pray to God for a breakthrough, you know? I, be, I believe many of us here are looking for a breakthrough in certain areas in, in our life. And, you know, in certain seasons, it's, it's always going to be like that. But look what God says. He says, the word of God says in Mark eleven twenty five, 25. And whenever you stand praying, forgive if you Come have on. anything against anyone so that your father also who was in wow. heaven may forgive you look your trespasses. You know, so it's a good it's, it's really good to acknowledge. It, it says this really caught my attention when I, I believe I read it yesterday or the day before. And it, it made me really examine myself. You know, and to be honest, I'm like, well, I, I do have something against somebody, you know, Forget and I, I forgave that person. I, I had to let it go. You know, I don't have no way to reach out to the person. I, it was just something petty that he did, but I, I let it go, you know, and um, I really I, I sensed the peace of God when that happened. But look what it says. If, if you have anything against somebody, let it go. You know, pray to God. Say, Lord, Lord, help me. I, I just want to let it go. And what would God do? He says he'll forgive you of your trespasses. So many of you might be looking for a breakthrough. You want some uh, peace in, in your life. Like what Gerard said in the beginning or Jeremy, one of them said it, just let it go. You know, tell go. the Holy spirit, help you to let it go. There's, let it go. there's no point of holding on to it. All, all that bitterness, it, it makes you physically sick. And there's even scriptures to back that up in Proverbs. And you know, there's one more thing I, I wanted to bring up before I pass it. let me see. Uh, I just had the scripture right here. It's in uh Proverbs. I love Proverbs. I've been trying to read a, um, like, what is it? A, a, a proverb a day. So let me see. Let me find it right here. I just had it pulled up a second ago. It's in Proverbs 28. Let me see. He, who, let me let me Google it. Right here. All right. Proverbs 28, 13. Then I'm going to pass it. Proverbs 28, Take time. Take 13. It says this. It says people who conceal their sins will not prosper. Mm. But if they confess and turn, that's the repentance. But if they turn. turn from them, they will receive mercy. Come on, somebody. You want to prosper? I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about every area of your life. You want to prosper? And I'm talking to myself as well. It says people who conceal their sins, you will not, it's a problem. You, I'm, mm. you're not going to prosper, he says. Come on. You're prospering what? You're not going to have that much joy. You're not going to have, you're not going to prosper in your peace. You're not going to prosper in revelation knowledge. You're not going to prosper in hearing my voice. You're not going to prosper in your bank account because you're hiding that sin. You're not confessing it. And if you do confess it, now you got to turn away from it. So, and then it says what? You'll receive mercy from God. You'll receive favor from the Lord. New doors open for you. Amen. That's right.
Amen. See, the, the, the thing is for me that helps me. And, and listen, I've, I've, I had some situations, man, where I would have every right, honestly, to hang on to it and be upset to tell you the truth, according to man's wisdom. Mm. I've had some things, man, where people have harmed me, man, and, 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 and done me wrong. I'm not trying to play the victim role. My point is I could take right. I could have I could have held on it and, and took things really personal. Mm. But one of the things that helps me, first of all, is I remember the things that God has forgiven me for. I remember the things that I have done, not in a condemnation type of way, but a way of just going down memory lane to keep that gratitude and uh, and thankfulness. Secondly, Mm. I refuse to allow myself to be hindered by anybody. Mm. I'm not going to do it. Let me tell you something. Are you okay with being a mediocre believer? Mm. Mm-hmm. Are you okay with just getting by? If that's you, that's fine. But for me, I want to impact my generation. Amen. I want to do something. I, I want God to use my life. I want to do something for the kingdom before I expire on this earth and I leave this earth and I leave this fleshly body. Mm-hmm. I want to do something for the kingdom. I want to have impact on this generation. I want to do something and I can't allow myself to be hindered by unforgiveness Mm. and something as petty as offenses by anybody, whether it's my children, my wife, my brothers here, uh, uh, somebody, I know somebody at work. I don't got time for it. I refuse to allow myself to be hindered. And for that to happen, you must be willing to sacrifice things that others won't sacrifice. You must be willing to forgive things that other people won't forgive. You Mm. must be willing to go deeper when they won't. I want to have some impact on this generation and I'm not going to allow anybody to hinder me. Mm. They offended me. Okay. That's fine. Here's a little secret. Here's a little secret. Do you know that there's not a human being walking this earth? That's your enemy. Mm, Come on. If if you're a believer, they could be used by the enemy, but they're not your enemy. Right. The scripture says we war not against flesh and blood. Does it not? Mm. I know who my enemy is mm-hmm. right. his name is satan yeah, yeah. His i know right. who my enemy is and i got him right in my crosshairs ah, come and on. i keep him there and i remember that it's not you it's not the brother over here right, it's, it's not, not this brother here it's not this sister here no 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 you're just a puppet on the strings yeah. but you aren't the enemy mm. we got to cut the head off the snake it's satan we war not against flesh and blood Yep. Listen right. to me, saints. Listen to me, saints. No man, no flesh and blood is your enemy. Amen. True. Amen. True. Jesus Amen. is uh, 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 Satan is your enemy, but Jesus has overcome Satan. That's Amen. right. That's true. Amen. You know, it, it, even as they're talking about the, um, you know, forgiveness, there's always a story. There's so much revelation in this story right here with um Saul. He was Saul at the time. He wasn't even Apostle Paul. He didn't. He didn't graduate. He didn't get that new name yet. <laughs> you know, um. He, he was Saul at the time. What was Saul known for? Well, he was he nice to Christians? He used to kill Christians. Pers- he was responsible for persecution of the church. He was persecuting mm-hmm. them. He was sending hits on them. He was the hit man. You know what I mean? He was sending people to, to, to like the mafia said, they was whacking them. He was throwing them in trunks. Who knows what he was doing? They ain't had no cars mm-hmm. back then, but probably on horses. Or something. But, then, but then look at the love and the mercy of God. This man was living in his sin. He was a murderer. He had a spirit of murder and anger and many demons on him. But on the road to Damascus, what happened? You see, the Lord met him there. The Lord forgive them of his sins. Why? You go to verse 15. It says because he was a chosen vessel. He was a chosen vessel to spread the gospel, to spread the good news. So that's why we got to be careful how we treat people, you know, because God said, if I forgive you, if I forgive you, you, you must forgive other people as well. You know, so yeah. that's just mind blowing to me. This man was a he was evil, basically, when you, when you look at it, yeah, yeah. he's killing so many people. But the Lord loved him. And he said, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You know, it, it just shows me the the mercy and grace that God had yeah. toward him because he was a chosen vessel That's of right. the Lord to declare the good news. Amen. So, That's true. Amen. Right. And, 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 yeah. and, and the reason and, and, and just to build on that is one of the reasons is the scripture says he says, I persecuted the church ignorantly. Mm. He didn't know what he was doing. In fact, he actually thought that he was in service of God. Mm. He really believed that he was serving God and he was doing God's will by doing that until he had the encounter. Yeah. My mm. prayer is that all of y'all have an encounter. Amen. Because when you have an encounter with God, repentance is easy. When you have an encounter with God, the change comes easy. You don't even got to try to do That's it right. yourself. When you run into the ancient of days, when you when you run into him, I'm telling you right now, repentance comes really easy. 
Yeah. Paul did those things ignorantly. He knew not what he was doing. He actually thought that he was in the service of mm. God. But God said, no, no, no. Mercy if he got God. that much zeal, if he got that much zeal for the devil, mm. that's why Come I'm going to choose man. him as a vessel because I mm. can imagine what he's going to do on. for me. Oh, yeah. 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 The mercy like, of God. Like, yeah. He forgave, he, he forgave himself and it reminds me when, remember, remember one, remember one Peter made that big splash in the boat. That's, that's someone not holding themselves in, in condemnation. Um, uh, Jesus, Jesus came back to his disciples and he, you know, like I read before, but it came back to my mind that, that Peter jumped out of the boat. He didn't feel bad. He forgave himself. Mm. He backslid. Jesus had to come after him three times. And what did he do? 21. Um, it's right here somewhere. Um, 21. They all, they all backslid. Jesus came to them three times. And you know, <laughs> right. just like, uh, just like Lou said, uh, 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 Apostle Paul, he he had to forgive himself. He had to know mm -hmm. that he was free. Just like Gerard said, that's right. You have to know. You have to know that Jesus will forgive you. Amen. And and and, and so you have to forgive yourself. So look at Peter's attitude. I'm trying to find it right here. So oh, right here. So in 21, Jesus came back and said, "Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Whatever." So mm. they're sitting. They're sitting over there, and he says, and the disciple whom Jesus loves says, that's the Lord. The Lord's coming back to him. And, and he said, throw your nets on the right side of the boat. And when they threw their nets, they were unable to hold the number of fish. Come that kind of, you know, mm. that, that kind of was like foreshadowing. That was kind of like, kind of prophetic. Like, you know how much right. fish you're going to catch for me in the world? I'm going to show you how much fish you're going to catch for me in the world. Pull up your nets. See how much fish you're going to catch right now. If you work for me, you're going to catch thousands of fish for me in the world. Amen. Um, and, and look what Simon Peter said. Um, as soon as they knew that it was the Lord going after them, this was Simon Peter's attitude after sinning. He didn't hold himself in condemnation. He didn't say, oh, Lord, am mm. I worthy? Like Gerard was mm. saying, oh, Lord, am I worthy enough? Oh, Lord, am I going to? Uh, will you ever forgive me? Oh Lord, am I, am I worthy to uh, work for you? Am I worthy to sing again? Am I worthy mm -hmm. to uh, go to the shopping mall and say your name for somebody? That's the devil's lies to That's you. Right. The prodigal father opens his arm and, and, and he killed the, he killed the fattest calf. Mm -hmm. Even the, even the other son got pissed Amen. off and said, uh, why don't I get that treatment? He said, That's because right. someone was lost and now they're back found again. Amen. So he accepts you. Oh, look at Peter's. Um, illustration. Look at look at Peter's um, uh, attitude of saying, "I am forgiven." He forgave himself, and it's hard because the devil does lie to you at night and say, "Jeremy, you did this. Remember, you did this." But right. that's the understand what John ten says. Know the stranger's voice. Mm -hmm. I'm learning that. We're all learning that. So when the devil Amen. comes and says, "You're not," like Gerard said, "You're not worthy. You're not worthy. You're not the worthy." Lie understand the devil's voice comes to destroy you and say you're not worthy so Amen. you keep your mouth you keep your mouth shut I mean, look at i'm getting to i'm sorry i'm getting into no I'm, no you're I'm okay go right ahead, now. go ahead this is this is peter's attitude right now then the disciple whom jesus loves says said to peter peter jesus came back to us we're out <laughs> we're out we're out neglecting the work of god as soon as simon peter heard this it is the lord he wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off. He jumped into the water because Jesus was at the shore. <laughs> they were in the boat. My man could have just sailed uh, methodically to the shore. He probably, probably got there just fine. He right. could not wait to forgive himself and say, I am forgiven. I am running back to Christ. My man jumped into the water. The other disciples followed him in the boat. You understand? They followed the swimmer. The mm. people in the boat, that's how eager Peter was to say, I want to get back to Christ. I'm going to leave my sins behind me. So that, that was Peter's attitude with saying, I'm going to, uh, uh, I am forgiven. No comment. Peter, Peter jumped into the, um, into the water. That was his attitude by saying, Lord, I, you have forgiven me. My past is gone. I did. Yeah, I, I did abandon you for a couple months here. Right. I abandoned you. So just, just like they're saying, you have to forgive yourself. Peter forgave himself, jumped into the water and went after that's you have to be your attitude. Jesus will accept you with open arms. That's Amen. that's that illustration is so powerful, Jared. Man, that's that's uh, and real quick, guys. He uh, we're gonna open up Zoom soon for for questions, prayer. Yeah, Brother exactly. Lewis, you'll see it down there. He put in the uh, the ID and the passcode for Zoom. Praise God. Come in, questions, prayer. We love the fellowship with you. But what 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 Jeremy 
what you brung out is so powerful there, man. It, even right before you started telling that story, I yeah. started to hear humility. Wow. A lot of people struggle because they have pride. Mm -hmm. They got to get over themselves. You need humility to follow God. You can't be proud. Lewis said it too when he spoke against pride. Amen. One of Peter's issue was pride and competitiveness. Mm. He was competitive and he was proud. Notice what he said. He says, well, even if all these deny you, I won't. Right. <laughs> and then he got some humble pie in abundance. Did he not? Mm -hmm. Right. So but what Jeremy just read in John chapter 21 is so powerful because what happens is when you fall away from God and you backslide, what do you do? You go back to what you used to do. Yeah. Jesus. What was he doing before Jesus called him? He was fishing. Right. Mm. So when Jesus wasn't around anymore, what did he say? They said, Peter, what are we going to do? He says, I'm going fishing. That's right. I'm going to go back to what I used to do. <clears throat> And he toiled and he was looking for this fulfillment and there was nothing. And he said, cast a net on the right side. But listen, what was beautiful about what Jeremy read when he swam to the shore. Check this out. Hold on. I want to catch it. And as soon as they were come to the land, they saw a fire of coals and there were fish laid on it and bread. Come on. <laughs> the things that you run out into the world and Jesus already got for you. Amen. The Amen. things that you go oh, pursue said. in the world where he already has it for you prepared. Not only Amen. did you not have to catch it, it was already cooking. Come mm. on. He had it on the coals good. with some bread for you. It was already ready. Already he said. Already had, listen, everything <laughs> that you need and desire is in Christ. Amen. You don't need anything that the world has to offer. All you have to do is repent and come home. He's waiting for That's you right. to come home. That's why he says, go and tell the disciples and Peter. Mm. Don't forget about Peter. I know what he did, but that's all right. You go tell disciples <laughs> and Peter. But look, he was humble now. Jeremy, you know when he kept saying, do you love me? Yeah. He says, yes, yeah, George, you know I love you. <laughs> Feed my sheep. Then he said, do you love me? He kept asking them. <laughs> do you know that in the Greek, they use different words of love? The mm. love that Peter was using and responding to when he says, yes, Lord, you know I love you. It was much more humble. It was a, yes, Lord. I love you. Mm -hmm. I, I like you. Mm -hmm. I prefer you type of love mm -hmm. in the definition. It was a lot more humble because early on he had no, even if, even if Jeremy and Lewis fall away from you, God, I won't do it. Mm. He on. was so proud right. and arrogant and he was really competitive with his brothers in Christ. What are we mm -hmm. competing for? What are we competing for? For what? That's right. No, listen, get rid of competitive. The spirit of competitiveness is of the devil. We ain't about to compete. We ain't about to be jealous and envy of nobody. The devil is a liar. Get rid of that. We need humility here. And we need to be submitted and yielded to the Holy Spirit. Right. Amen. Peter had an issue with that, that pride and that competitiveness. But look, when he jumped into that water and he got to that land, Jesus had some fish on the fire for him already. He was already cooking. There was even bread. <laughs> right. come on man how could you right. beat that god got what you need amen, he got amen. what you need good word, good word, yeah good word, good word. yeah man that's true amen right. yeah, it's not about being uh competitive you know it's all yeah. about winning souls that, that's, that's what it's about when, when go yeah. the people that want to be competitive is because you just sit and watching everyone do god's work that's why you know when you start going winning souls you ain't got time to to look at other people and, yes, and, and nitpick at them Cause you're yes, busy sir. laying hands on the sick, casting out devils. What yes, are we sir. supposed to go? I heard somebody, uh, one of my guys, I think it was Quavis. I was watching one of his clips. He goes, like, "What are you supposed to uh, compete on? Who feeds the homeless hot dogs better? Like, what is how you going? Yes. What are you supposed to compete about? Like, we are here winning the loss. You know, we're obeying the Great Commission, and we want to see the lost saved, healed, yeah. delivered, set free, and on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's what it's about. You know, and, hey, we can even work together. We don't, we don't have to be um, competing at all. That, that's it's not yeah. kingdom minded. That's what we always tell each other. That's not kingdom mind. It's not, kingdom -minded. not at all. Yeah. So, yeah, sure. but on top of that, you know, we got the zoom open right here. If you, uh, I got all the information there. Like, like brother Gerard said, if you want prayer, if you have any uh, questions that you want to tell us face to face or whatever, we're yeah, here, we're here, on, we're here, man. we're here. Tap in, man. We're talking about forgiveness here, man. Repentance. <clears throat> Amen. We're talking about forgiveness as L. Uh, uh, as well, man. Listen, man, repent so that you can receive God's forgiveness. Forgive others so that you can be forgiven. And listen, man, yeah, forgive man. yourself. 
Get rid of that condemnation. Stop letting that stuff weigh you down. Mm-hmm. Get yeah, rid of that yeah. condemnation in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. Yeah, I think we right, had yeah. a question here, Lou. Excuse me. Yeah, but, um, I hey, y'all, this is strictly for the brothers, he said. No, it's for what we're, we're talking about. This is for the body of Christ. This is for, for everybody. We're, we're, we're giving the word. It ain't, this ain't just, uh, I believe that's what he's saying. Is this for the brothers? Yeah. He said, he said, hey, y'all, is this strictly? No, it's for everybody. Everybody's in here. Are you talking about the podcast or the teaching? Specifically, Bonnie? Bonnie. Period, she says. Yes. I want to tap in real quick. Go to ahead. the proud thing. Um, don't be proud of saying you're a um, you made a mistake or, or, or saying you was uh, saying you're a sinner, because if you look at everyone that got, I mean, everyone, the devil lies to you and says, you have to be perfect. You know, like I've met people in church that, 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 that said to me before, there's a new person coming to church. You know um, I can't tell them what I did a couple of nights ago, or I, or I can't tell them that I backslid because I'm going to be a bad example to them. But the fact is God died on the cross for our sins. Knowing this, God, check out this line here. This is going to blow your mind. It's not really going to blow your mind. But God only uses sinners. That's mm. it. Sinners, or if you look in the Bible, God only uses uh, sinners who have, like what we're talking about today, God only uses sinners who have repented. So yeah. you're not in a category. Come on. If, you're, if you're proud and you're saying, um, uh, I can't, I can't admit to people around me that I'm a sinner. Well, then God can't use you because God right. only uses the humble. He only uses those who mess up and then forgive. Look at, uh, look at King David. Look who he became to be. Uh, you mm. know, look at, you know, look at uh, Saul, like, 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 like Lou said, God only uses sinners. And there's two people in the world that came to my mind a couple of days ago about, about, about sinning Peter and Judas. Look at Peter and Judas. Mm. Uh, 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 Peter denied Christ. Peter also fled away from Christ for months, like like Gerard was explaining. He, he, he went back to his world. But but what was Peter's attitude? Peter's attitude was, I'm gonna jump back into the water. Come I'm on. gonna I know what Jesus has for me on the shore. He already has what I need. I'm gonna, like, like Gerard said, I'm gonna leave my fish behind me. There's two kinds of people who 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 deal with sin. Um, and the first one is Peter, who is in sin. Jesus comes back to him. Jesus comes knocking on your door and you, you swim after Jesus knowing he has something. And there's a Judas kind of a Judas, a Judas kind of sinner. And I, and I know mm-hmm. it was foretold in the Bible that, that the son of perdition and, you know, someone's, someone's going to be replaced, but it doesn't matter because there's, there's two types of um, sinners in the world. One is Peter who says, I don't, Jesus forgave me on the cross. Another one is getting so deep in your condemnation that you kill yourself mm. and you never resurface wow. and you never work. Yeah. Judas did not come to the point where he said, Jesus can forgive me. He condemned himself self so much. The devil lied to him and said, you'll never be able to be forgiven. You'll never be able to work again. You'll never be a disciple again. But he didn't know that everyone mm-hmm. else betrayed him also. He knew that, but the devil lied to him. There's two, two, two kinds of ways you can accept That's good, being, a si- being a sinner. Jump That's back really into Christ, or you could be like a Judas and, and, and live in condemnation. Mm-hmm. And you never, you know, think to yourself right now. Ask yourself right now, five years ago, am I in the same spot I am right now? Do I have the same mindset? Do I keep on saying to myself, I'll never get there. I'll never be able to be a teacher of, of the word. Right, I'll never be able to go out there because I'm not worthy. Right. What kind What kind of lie are you believing? The devil's lie? Or mm. are you believing God's, uh, the voice of the shepherd to say, jump back in the water. God has what God will accept you back. He came after his disciples three times. Mm. Go ahead, Lou. Go ahead. This is some good stuff here. So praise God. So, you know, I'm, I'm real like an open book. I'm real testimonial, you know, because I believe it helps people when you just you lose that pride. And you, like what you said earlier, you could hey, if you're, if you're messing up, if you, if you commit a sin on that, like you so holy. The Bible says if you say you don't sin, you're a liar. You're not of me. You know, we, we sin every day. All of us do. Even in, in your mind, you, you, you sin. All of us sin. But like I always say, practicing sin, that's a whole, you know, that's a whole different topic. But I'm going to give you guys something to help you. You know, if, if it works for me, it, it works for anybody. You know why? Because it's, it's biblical. So Jesus don't change. Right. And who is God? God is love. And, and the Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today and forever. I used to be one of those people that condemn myself every time I slipped in, into sin. 
like in my first stages in my walk and I got saved in 2010, but I would continue to fall in sin because I, I didn't let go of a certain relationship. And the Lord was telling me, let it go, let it go. But I was, I didn't trust God at that moment, you know, but anyways, so I learned, I learned to meditate on the love of Jesus Christ and not my sin. And when I would meditate upon his love, because it don't change for me, whether I sin or not, he, he'll be angry at me. He, he's not pleased at my sin. But then when I start to focus on his love and I focus on Calvary through all my sin, through all my shortcomings, um, because I wasn't I, I wouldn't say I was necessarily practicing sin, but I would continue to fall into it every month or every like, you know, every six weeks. And then I beat myself up for two, three weeks. But the moment I focus on his love that helped me to push into corporate prayer more, that helped me to push into my Bible more, that helped me draw closer to him because I knew he still loved me the same. His love didn't change for me. So if somebody's watching today and you say, I can't stop smoking. I can't stop doing this and that. Stop looking at that. Look at Jesus. Don't make your circumstances Come bigger on. than Christ because he's a big God. And that's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to look at how you how you keep messing up. Get your, get your eyes off of that. Put your eyes back on Come Jesus. On. And that's the secret. The Bible says when you keep your mind on Jesus, you have perfect peace. And that's where you find that healing. That's where you find that deliverance. And like what Gerard says, people don't have to always lay hands on you and cast demons out. I know a lot of you probably see these people casting out devil. All you got to do is be obedient. I know people that were just obedient to the word. Nobody put oil on them. They were obedient to the word and they received deliverance. And you're looking at one of them right here. Amen. That's Praise true. God. Uh, Focus on his love. Your healing is in your obedience. Mm -hmm. Your healing is in your obedience. It's that simple. But just like Lewis said, listen, man, if if, if, if you're struggling with it, I'm not talking about if you're willing, willingly running to it and enjoying it, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. But right. I'm talking about if you're struggling mm -hmm. in sin, you're falling in sin. Listen, Proverbs 24 and 16. I said it earlier. Let's read it again. For a just man falleth seven times and rises up again, mm -hmm. but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Obviously, the fall is not what makes him just or righteous, but the willingness to get up and say, no, mm. God has been too good. I'm not going to stay here. Amen. I'm not going to sit in this. Get up, repent and keep moving. Stop sitting in it. Yes. And those of us who are spiritual, listen, stop, stop putting condemnation on people, too, that don't need it. That's mm -hmm. already beating themselves up. And what I'm saying is I'm not talking about calling out error. I'm all for calling out error. Mm -hmm. I'm all for confronting sin. I'm all Amen. about it. I speak against the truth, but I'm talking about you need discernment, though. You need to be able to discern if somebody's playing with something mm -hmm. and if someone's being overtaken. That's right. And mm. they're struggling. Let's get it. Galatians 6 and 1. Mm. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you, which are spiritual, will store such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering Amen. thyself, lest also you be tempted. Listen, yep. if you discern, you need discernment. Your brother may not be wanting to do that. Right. He may just be really struggling. Mm. Amen. He may be just overtaken with something. Mm -hmm. Yes, tell him the truth. Pray for him, be stern, but help him. Amen. It's good work. Maybe you need to go deeper instead of just seeing them on Sunday. How about you invite them over this week for Bible study? Hmm. Mm, amen. amen. How about you invite them over for some worship? Amen. Amen. That'll, that'll do it. Huh? Spend right. some time with them outside of Sunday. Go beyond that. Let's go mm. deeper. Everybody want to come to church. Everybody want to. And listen, listen, I'm going to be real. Everybody want to be seen winning the loss today, but don't nobody want to disciple nobody. Mm. Mm. Everybody wants to be an evangelist, but no one wants to disciple anybody. Come on. Right? Oh, so winning, so winning, so winning. Hey, listen, I'm all for it. That's God's heartbeat. Praise God. I love Amen. to do it. I'm quick to preach the gospel to the lost. But what do you do with them after that? Mm. Mm -hmm. Amen. You, you, you just expect them to know, right? You, you, you just expect them to go from a newborn no. baby to a fully Cycle mature them. believer in one day. Amen. Amen. No, we need some discipleship. What happens after that? I'm not saying you just run around grabbing everybody. That's not your assignment. But if God places somebody in your life, mm. if he places somebody on your heart, it could just be one person, man. Amen. Somebody. If, if, if that person keep popping up on your heart, right. if Come they on, keep yeah. calling you when they're in trouble, Amen. calling Amen. you late at night, you're thinking about them. They keep crossing around. Hey, maybe you oh, meant yeah. to go deeper with them. Yeah. 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 Maybe you yep. meant to intercede for that person, sit that person down, get into the word of God with them, 
be a good example. Show them how to navigate this thing. Because listen, I'm going to say something, then I'm going to pass it on. We have no spiritual fathers, fathers, but a whole lot of souls out here today. Mm. I'm seeing a lot of grumpy old men of God who lost their anointing that want to criticize everything that the mm -hmm. young men of God are doing today, but nobody wants to be a Paul to these Timothys. Mm. Hmm. Nobody mm. wants to be an Elijah to these Elijahs. Mm. Where's my wow. spiritual fathers at? Where's my spiritual mothers at? But mm. everybody want to be a Saul and try to kill David all the time. Mm. Mm. Come on. Mm, some on, of y'all been walking away listen that's a whole some podcast of some of y'all been walking away so long you in the way yeah Come well, on. maybe you need to get out of the way wow where the spiritual Shit fathers at man? we got a whole lot of souls out here today hold yeah. on say that for now we got we got to nah, do this nah, one next nah, week nah, we nah, doing this <laughs> where are the spiritual fathers though next week big topic yeah yeah come on I'm going to build on this one. I'm going to let it go, man. Y oh, go oh. Let me shut up. Wow. No. Now, see, if oh, I yeah. build on this one, we're gonna, it's going to be a whole other time. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to yeah, be another I'm topic. Sorry. But I just want to confirm something. He said back. I just want to confirm something that he said, though, be, before he started talking about the grandpa ministers out here that, that are that are coming against the youngsters that, that are in the newness of God. I just want to say number that B, God B. is doing something new. It, it, Not very it, young. It's just new methods of doing things. You know what I mean? God ain't doing his old stuff where it's just one man preaching. And God's... But these old timers don't get that. So then they'll, they, they won't like the, the freshness of God. They're not used to that. I'm not saying they're going to hell, but they'll be like, they, they won't like it. They, they just don't get it. But hey, God will just pass them by anyways when it comes to the newness and won't use them as, as, as they yeah. want to get used. But be, besides yeah. that, check this out. It says, we, yeah. it, it says in James 5 19, my dear brothers and sisters, if someone among you wanders away from the truth and is brought back, you Come can on. be sure that whoever brings the sinner back, from wandering will save that person from death and bring about the forgiveness on, of many sins. Oh, now, you notice it, now you notice it didn't say that God, I understand God brings people back, but like you said, like with Jurassic, you got to use discernment though. On, Some somebody. people are so far gone. You've been wasting your time for months and years on these people. You've been wasting your time. You, you, you think that you became Jesus. No, no, let them go. Cause Paul does say you got to give some people to the devil. So they can get restored back to God and reconcile back to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. But then there's other people that God said, listen, you got to discern that this person just struggling. They, they don't really want to live like that. So go after them, you know, bring them back to me. And look what it says in verse 20. You can be sure that whoever brings the sinner back. So sometimes we can't just say, oh, let God do it. No, sometimes you got to do it. Yeah, Not God right. all the time. That's yeah. right. Come on, somebody with love. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Just something that dropped in my spirit, according yeah. to what, yeah. what I just said a second ago. And, uh, <clears throat> Sister, uh, Sister Melinda, she said it. She says, age doesn't make you a spiritual mother or father. You're right, right. sis. You're, you're right. Your maturity to own Christ, your obedience to the Lord. First Timothy chapter four and 12 says this, let no one despise your youth, huh. but be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and in purity. Listen, if I got any young brothers on here and you're struggling and you're trying to find your way, I want to recommend some scripture to you. I want you to read first and second Timothy. Mm. Those books have really helped my young brothers. It'll really help my young brothers in the Lord. It'll really help you find your way. <laughs> It'll show you, 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 you teach, you, you treat the younger sisters in Christ as sisters. Mm -hmm. You treat the older sisters in Christ as mothers. Mm -hmm. It talks about your conduct, how we are, uh, how we're supposed to conduct ourselves as young men in Christ, because they're in it. There isn't many good examples for us today. Right. I'm not saying that there's not any. There's some. There's a lot yeah. of good examples. There's I, I've seen old and young, great men of God who are still walking upright. And I praise God for that. And right. I appreciate them. I appreciate their example and their faithfulness. Right. Uh, we wouldn't be here. So praise God. But listen, mm -hmm. no man is the standard. Those that compare themselves by themselves are not wise. Listen, get into the word of God. First and second Timothy. If you're a young, if you're a young lady, get into the scripture. Let the scripture be the standard. Let the scripture be your example. Let the scripture teach you, Amen. of course, by the uh, presence of the Holy Spirit as well. Amen. That's right. I want to, um, and there's no more questions. I want to tap back into a little encouragement of, of people not feeling worthy. Uh, you know, like, you know, like we said for the last 10 minutes that, that God uses sinners. He used, he used Saul. He doesn't use anybody but sinners because you fell and you're what the Bible say suffering produces perseverance, perseverance produces character, character, hope, uh, you know, 
Uh, it says it in James 1 and 1 Peter 1, it says, counter all joy when you suffer. It, 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 it produces perseverance and character and, 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 and then God's glory will be revealed if you get through the test. When your test is, um, when your test is approved, God will have, mm -hmm. so it doesn't say um, if your test, it says when you, when you have approved the test, then God's glory will be revealed. Mm -hmm. So when you suffer, it's a promise that you will get out of the suffering and have a testimony. So, right. so just know for a fact, know for a fact that troubles are, uh, uh, trials are destined for you. And mm. I want to, um, I want to encourage you with a list of, of a genea, a genealogy of Jesus. I started reading Matthew and mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm going to skip this first genealogy, but God said, read the names. No, read that. It's there for a reason. Come on. And check us out. It, oh, it's, it, 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 it got me good, right? So the genealogy of Jesus, to encourage those people who think that they cannot be used, look at the gene genealogy of Jesus. I won't read it all, but it says, Matt, Matt, what's that? Matt, yeah, no, Matthew. Right. I'm just running my mouth. No, so no, that's fine. Oh, yeah, you can uh, uh, tap it if you want. Um, check out what God revealed in his word. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac, uh, Isaac the father of Jacob was the father of Judah. Judah mm. stuck out to me. Judah had sex with a prostitute. That's Sinner. Right. He, he, uh, he's in the genealogy, genealogy of Jesus. That's and then, right. and then, and then even his, even his tribe was, uh, was, was, uh, 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 um, it had the curse because then Achan sinned, I believe, uh, Achan was also, uh, uh, uh tribe of Judah. And then you go, you keep on going down Perez and, and, and Ram and, uh, and, and Nashan and, uh, Selman and Boaz, check us out, Boaz, who, whose mother was Rahab, my, my, my girl Rahab, the prostitute made the genealogy of Jesus. <laughs> Rahab is the great, yeah. I figured it out here. I'm not a theologian. Wow. I figured it out last night. Rahab is the great, 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 I think great grandmother of King David. Ray, if you don't think God can use you, God has Rahab Amen. in the geneal genealogy of Jesus. A pro read Joshua. And they went into a prostitute's house, Rahab. And look what happened to Rahab. She, pro she got saved from prostitution. She got married to, um, she got married to salmon, like the fish, mm. salmon. She got married to Sam. So she, she tightened her life up. She got mm. married and her son and her made the geneal genealogy of Jesus. Look at Solomon. Solomon, uh, Solomon's son, who were all set, um, uh, Solomon, who's King David, all sinners that were that made the book, that made the Bible, and the genealogy of Jesus. Look at Rah Rahab was a prostitute, and was used to bring forth the baby Jesus. Mm. So don't think that if you're a sinner, God cut your life off. That's right. You're not worthy anymore. Come All you got to do is jump into the ocean like Peter did. And we'll, like with Gerard, Gerard's revelation, great revelation, Jesus already has for you on, what you already need. That's and right. Don't believe the lie of the devil. If you're a prostitute or, or, or if you're a sexual fiend or if you're a drug addict or you just have a terrible anger problem or you're just a simple liar or gossiper. Rahab went from a prostitute to a mother mm. and God didn't wait for a perfect mother. He used the prostitute that encourages me that God can use mm. sinners and he pretty much only uses sinners. Um, I just read the gene. I read the genealogy and it just, I, I'm like, I'm reading. I'm like, whoa, whoa we're talking about repentance. Right. Look at all these people in the gene genealogy, <clears throat> sinner, 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 sinner. Praise God. Mm. Praise God. First Corinthians chapter one and 26 says this, for you see your calling brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things mm, of wow. the world Good one. to mm. confound the wise. Yeah. And God has chosen the weak things of the world mm. to oh. confound the things which oh. are mighty. That hits hard. See, it says <laughs> God calls sinners. Praise God, everybody's sinners. So what is he talking about? He calls those that acknowledges that they're sinners because right. you cannot repent unless one acknowledges that he has sinned. The verse that you, Lewis used last night, First uh, John chapter 1 and 9. Mm. But if you confess your sin, he is faithful right. to forgive and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Oh. See, do you, yes, everybody's a sinner, but the reality is, do you know that you're a sinner though? Mm. Right. There are many people that say they have no sin. 
There are many mm. people that don't think they need a savior or salvation. Mm. No, 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 no. no. Oh. Everybody's a sinner. There's not okay. one good person on the face of this earth. Not one. No mm. one's good. But God comes to those that are broken, that know mm. they're no good. The prostitute, mm. the murderer, the yeah. gang member, mm. the Amen. thief, the liar, Amen. the drug addict, the demon possessed. That's who he comes for. No, That's who he right. uses. Right. I was I was some of those things. But praise Amen. God, I was set free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We're all, we're all centered. I was we're set free, and I'm no longer those things. I'm Lord. a new creation in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. That's Ooh. what the Amen. word says. I'm no longer a slave to Come sin. Come on, somebody. I'm no longer Amen. a slave to sin. Child. So I've been set free. No Jerry, get your guitar, Jerry. Yeah. I don't. Uh, but don't check this that. out. As yeah. these two brothers were talking, like something just like jumped in my Come spirit. On. I love when God just jumps in. He just he interrupts my thoughts and he just cuts them off. You know, uh, we talked about the blood last week. You know, it's a, it's a powerful weapon. Some of you, some of you going through a, through a test to receive a <laughs> testimony because the Lord is going to give you another weapon. Come on, the Lord is going to the Lord is about to give some of you a, a new weapon, a, a new testimony against the devil. Okay. So when he comes to attack you, you're going to say, "Oh yeah, I, re I remember that." But boom, and you're going to hit him with the testimony Come on, of somebody. God's goodness and God's faithfulness or whatever he's done to you. Come on. You might feel like you're in a jam. You might be going through some things in your, in your life, but Come you on. just stand on the word. Testimony. The word the word never changes. The word stays the same. God's the testimony. same yesterday, today, and forever. His promises right. are yes and amen. So as you stand upon the word, guess yeah. what? That word is going to manifest. God's going to show yeah. up. Yeah. Don't don't yeah. look. Don't worry about time. Just just worship right. the Lord. When you feel right. down, get around somebody to pray with you or, or get alone in the secret place and, and start to sing to the Lord. Connect with him. Get into his word. And guess what? He's going to give you a new weapon when he shows up, when he answers that prayer. It's going to be tangible. You're going to yeah. see it with your own eyes. You ain't going to see it in the spirit realm no more. You, you're literally going to see it. You're going to see that yeah. blessing. You're going to say, look what the Lord has done for me. And you're going to know it's from him because when he shows up, he shows out. He gives you favor. That, that you never thought you could have. God does the impossible. Mm. He's in the yeah. he's in the business of the impossible. <laughs> when you say, I don't know how this happened. I, I couldn't do it. This person could have do it for me. But I, I can't explain what he did. It was impossible. He, he did it. Wow. That's your weapon right there to smack the devil down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Impossible. Get ready for those weapons. They're coming. Hallelujah. Right, right. Right. And you're right, Lewis. You're so right. And you've been saying it all night, Lewis. You kept saying the same word. I can't ignore it anymore. Testimony. He overcame Listen. him by the blood of the lamb and the yeah. what? The Amen. word of the, the testimony. Word. Listen, saints, your testimony matters. Amen. I don't want everybody on here. You got a testimony. You got something that God brung you through, something to save you from. And I, I want to encourage you. Your testimony matters. I want you to use Huge. that testimony to give the devil a black eye. Wow. Yeah. Do not listen. Do not be ashamed of your testimony. I don't care what you used to do. Come on. You need to sit down and have a conversation with me. And I'm telling you, I will lean you back. You'll Come be surprised. Listen, your testimony matters. I'm going to give you an example. Last night we were ministering at the open door mission. That's right. And as we were praying and flown in the spirit, because there was such a heavy presence last night. We just, that's a homeless it, shelter for you don't, that don't yes. know. Demons was being cast out. Uh, uh, we, Amen. We, we were prophesying. We were, Ooh, listen, we were flown in the spirit. But this older sister came up and she looked at me and she said, I need prayer from my kids. Mm. And I just looked at her and started listening to the Holy Spirit. And he told me everything that was going on. She was worried about her kids' safety. And I told her, I said, look, I gave my mother a lot of sleepless nights. When I said that, the lady fell to pieces. Mm. I said, I gave her a lot of sleepless nights. But oh, I said, look what God has done. Amen. Wow. Now I'm cool. here telling you about oh, Jesus. Big alley, big right? alley up. She big fell alley. apart. Then I told oh. her, I said, you need to forgive yourself for what you did to those kids in the ways that you failed them. Doesn't mm. matter. Anymore. She fell apart. The Holy Spirit even told me how many kids she had. But we're not going to listen. The point is those things that you went through, the things that God brought you through Let's is going to help somebody else. Amen. Am I speaking amen. to somebody? Listen, yes, amen. those yes, things that God helped you to overcome, to those me. mountains that he amen. moved, you can encourage and speaking to somebody else's life and say, listen, I'm not just telling you this because it sounds good. He can do it for you because I'm telling you he did it for me. I was there. I was you before you got there. And I'm telling mm. you right now, God can bring you through. it. He can set you free if you let him. But Come here's on. the key. Here's the key. You got to be willing to confess and you need yes. to hate that. old. You need to hate that old life. You need to hate that old man that you are. You need to hate that old woman that you are. You need to hate that sin. Hate the very sight of it. Oh, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Jerry. Let me shut up. Come on. Uh, I'm going to tap right into all that, uh, uh, of, <laughs> all of that what goodness. 
what your what your testimony of what they just two said, what your testimony is going to be. If you let the situations around you turn to bitterness and yes. you don't see what God's trying to form, listen, the, listen even gold is in the fire mm. for a certain amount of time, not forever. That's right. But if you but if you say the fire around me is not fair, but if you see that the fire around you is going to make you stronger, you will come out as gold. Look at who who would have Esther who would have Esther been if she prayed herself out of the fire? Mm. Uh, your our prayer should be God, don't take me out of the fire yet. Come on, help uh, me withstand um, the flame. Come on, it somebody. May, it may be it may be hard, but if you pray yourself out of the fire, then you will not be the person that God wants you to be. Look at mm. Joseph didn't say God. Pray me out of this dish. Pray me out of the dungeon. He just, he prayed. Look at Paul and Silas. They didn't pray themselves out of the uh, 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 prison. They praised themselves out of the, when they were Come in the, somebody. when they were in the uh, dungeon, they pray, pray, they praised before their, uh, the jail oh, yeah. self broke. Amen. Praise is, praise is faith. You don't, you don't look at your surroundings and say, I'm bitter at my surroundings and you lose your testimony. Uh, look who Esther, look who Esther would have lost. Mm, come on of what she would have been look what look what mordecai would have mm. lost mordecai was 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 revealed in the whole jewish in, in in the world as one of the most prominent men in the world he could have been bitter and said i'm about to be hung they're putting the gallows up for me if he looks at his situation and said this is not fair or if you look at your situation and say, what is God doing to me? Am I going to pass this test? This girl, uh, uh, whatever, Rachel just lost me my job. She lied about me and she said uh, uh, something uh, uh, false. My boss just fired me. Yes, I'm a little mad. My flesh might get a little upset. Mm. But you say, God, 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 after this, like what they said, after this testimony, oh my God. I look at oh. it like this. <laughs> God is allowing this to happen. For what Lewis and Gerard said, God's allowing this to happen for me to pop out with a testimony. Yeah, I got to tap oh, back somebody. in. <laughs> who, who was jo Joseph? Would have lost. Joseph would have lost his 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 his, his destination. Esther, would, well, Gerard's new word. Esther would have lost her destination huh. if she didn't look at her surroundings as God's allowing this to make me a better person. Mm. Come on, somebody. Amen. Uh, no, I, I just want to say, like, before that big breakthrough comes. Or when God's going to do a, a real mighty move somewhere. We all like experienced this yesterday. I didn't yeah, really somebody. feel like going to minister at all. Did, did you notice the word that I said? I said, I didn't feel. We don't go by feelings in, in this. Right. We go we go by the truth in this walk with, with the Lord Jesus Christ. It felt crazy. We go, we go by the word. So I, I believe we could blame the devil all we want. But I believe the Lord was just testing me to see well, now, what you're going to do now. You know, I'm mm -hmm. going through a lot of things with the vehicle. How many of you guys had a vehicle break down? It, it don't feel good when your vehicle, when your vehicle breaks down. You're not oh. like, yeah, all right. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Now you're <laughs> going to feel that thing. Let's not be religious <laughs> about it. You're, you're going to get mad. You're going to be upset. You ain't going to be happy about that. Like, you know what I mean? Let's not be a uh, Pharisee and be uh, fake about it. You know, I was upset about a lot of things. Too many, too many things going on in my mind. Uh, I'm working on my album, which is going to be released Friday, April 22nd. I got to plug that. July uh, 22nd. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah. July 22nd. Did I say April? That's my wife's birthday. But anyways. Yeah. So and then I'm cooking, uh, helping the wife, you know, cook food for the kids. I got all this on my mind. I'm like, I don't even like really like feel like going. You know what I did? I literally sensed like, you a yeah, I was cooking. And as I was cooking, I literally sensed like a cloud over my head. It felt like my head was like a thousand pounds and just thoughts going through my mind. I said, you know what? That's it. After I cook this, this fish fry. I'm going upstairs in, in my room, getting away from everybody. And this is, this is real life stuff. Come on. I, like, I like to be real. I wasn't feeling the joy of the Lord. I wasn't feeling the peace of God. None of that stuff. I was feeling, I was sensing the cares of this world that, that it was trying to come and choke the word in me. So what I did, I went upstairs and I just started to tell God, I threw it at his feet. Everything that was on my mind, I started to release it to him. And I said, God, just thank you for favor. You, you know, everything, everything that's going on. And I just started to pray for every situation. Then I started to worship him. I started to praise him. I started to say, I started to say, Lord, thank you for shedding your blood, for giving me That's access right. to your throne room. That's Lord, right. let me just sense your presence. And I promise you about 20, 30 minutes into it, mm. it's pu pushing into God because he's the living God. He wants you to sense his presence. That's what he died living for. I, I started to sense the presence of God. My yes. mind, whoosh, it started to come like this. Instead of being a, a billion pounds, it started to go back to the normal wow. weight. The normal weight was upon me now. And I started to tap into the presence of God. Come on, and somebody. I was excited to go minister with my brothers in Christ and, and with everyone that was there to go feed the homeless and, and to go pray yeah. for them, lay hands on them and cast out devils, prophesy. 
everything that, that we did yesterday in the name of Jesus, of course. Yeah, but that's that's just an encouragement to you guys. Don't go by feelings. Go to go to the secret place. Get away. Even if it's 10, 15 minutes, just get away. Call on the name of Jesus Christ. And, and he always shows up. He, he's Amen. faithful to show up and you'll tap into that peace and um, you'll go about your day. Just Amen. don't you sit keep, there and meditate upon the, the cares of this world. You don't you don't have to do that. You keep setting me up, Lou. I got to build on that. Well, Set praise God. We're both we, got set big, up. we got a big guy. Call on his name. That's the name of the EP, by the way. Call, Call on, on his name. name. <laughs> I'm going to throw, yeah, throw a little sample this after this. This guy named Jeremy shot the vi- shot the vi- he, He's going to shoot the shot video the for video. it. Oh, yeah. the last, I thought I shot a video. No, the last one. video was, what was it? Oh, Sip no, Sip Living Water. Sip and Living Water. Sip Living Water. This guy named Jeremy shot the video. Yeah, some guy with a suit jacket. And Nicole, yeah. and, and Nicole, we see you. I see you. We're we going to rebuke that COVID in Jesus' name. In fact, I rebuke that COVID in Jesus' in name. Jesus' name. You be healed. That body will line up and do what God designed it to do. Amen. He said, by our, his stripes, we are healed. So, COVID, we bind in you. Jesus' name. We command you to leave in Jesus' name. You have yes, no Lord. power and no authority. no authority. COVID, kick rocks in Jesus' in name. Jesus' she name. Is by the healed. blood of Jesus. You receive it and you walk in this. Right. It's praise God. So, what Lewis is talking about, this this is what Lewis said in a nutshell. He got a lot going on, right? Personal life. Satan mm-hmm. wants to bring distractions. He wants to choke the word in him so that That's he can right. be unfruitful. Why? Because he wanted those people that we were going to see last night to stay bound. Yeah. To stay in chains. This is why we got to understand that we are soldiers. That's and right. soldiers cannot be caught up in the cares of this world. We cannot be worried about what's going on at home if I'm going to war, because if I'm at war and engaged with the enemy and I'm thinking about what's happening at the house, I may get killed. Let's go. That's right. Come on. Listen, let me give it to you. Scripture. Word. Second mm-hmm. Timothy, chapter two and at verse three. Thou therefore endured hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Oh, me up hard too. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Mm. No man that warth entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Let me read oh, it. Again. No man that warth entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has mm. chosen Come him on. to be a soldier. Listen. Amen. Some of you guys have some things in your life that you're hanging on to that is stopping you from walking in your destiny. What you need to do is you need to pray and ask God to remove whether it's a job, relationships, people, things, desires from your life that is hindering you from walking in your destiny. Mm. Listen, you need to walk in your destiny and do what God called you and created you to do. You need to pray and ask that those things be removed that hinder you in In Jesus Jesus name. name. Go ahead, he said, he said, he's making us into a soldier and Lou said all the hardships. He Hebrew says, if you're an illegitimate child, if you don't go through trials, mm. if you don't get discipled by Christ. And if you read at the end of Hebrews 12, where it says he loves who he disciples, you got to read the whole thing. He said, and you're ignorant if you're not trained by that situation. Mm, he yes. said, you don't just go through a, you don't go through a, a trial and complain about it and get right through. He said, love Endure. the situation because it's in a, it's in a, it's in a produced perseverance and it's in a produced character. And then what came, what came to my mind was, was uh, 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 how, look what I was reading Exodus. He said, after they left Egypt, Jesus said, I could have sent them the easy way. I could have sent them through the Philistine country, through the way that was shorter. For yes. God said, I didn't want to send them through the easy way. I, mm. if, and then verse uh, 13, verse 17, if they face war, they might change their minds. They might change their minds. Um, um, and, and, and return. God could have not made the travel out of Egypt. He, he could have made it not hard. He said, I could have made, uh, it, I don't know, what, what was it, like a 30 or 40 day, tra- 30 or 40 day uh, 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 um, tra- He said, I made, the, I made the road hard. I made the road hard so they may change. Mm. Uh, if they face war, they may go back. So yes. um, he said, I could have sent them, I don't know, I keep on saying it. I could have sent them the, the, the shorter way. Right. And what Lou said, the trials, trials in his mm-hmm. life produce you to be a soldier. And then one more verse, Deuteronomy 8. He said, Deuteronomy 8, he said, he said, remember the Lord your God led you through the desert for 40 years. He led you to humble and test you in order that your hearts 
would keep his commands. Mm. Check this out. Verse eight, verse three. He humbled you, causing you to hunger. Mm. So he mm. puts you through the harder way to cause you to hunger. If trials don't happen in your life, you don't become a soldier. If yeah. you don't accept things happening in your life, like Lewis's broken down car, Lewis's headache, Lewis's <laughs> thing with his family. He's, he said, the list he, goes on. <laughs> he said, and we all have problems. All of us, everyone has problems. It's how it's it's how you take it. Ooh, and if you if if you if you say God, this is not fair to me. You're not learning from that. If you're saying God, you're disciplining me to be a soldier, mm -hmm. then you're eating that thing. He says in Deuteronomy eight three, he said, "I caused you to go through the desert to humble you and cause Ooh. you to hunger." Why does he put us through situations to get us to get our attention and make Lewis go upstairs and pray more? That's make, right. Jer make Jeremy. If I didn't go through a hard time, God's a jealous God. He would not cause me to hunger. Read Deuteronomy 8.3. He, he brought me through. He's bringing Lewis. He's bringing Gerard through the desert to cause me to hunger, to make right. me into the person God wants me to be. I'm not going to look at my situations around me and say, it's not fair that my car broke down. It's not fair that, that my RG knee bill is $700. It's not fair. I'm not going to look at that. I'm going to say, wow, God, what are you allowing in my life to cause me to be a soldier? I would not be a soldier unless you didn't, this unless you didn't, unless you did not bring me the hard way. Right. And we are all, <laughs> listen, this is not out of, out of, our, out of our mouths. We're all going through the hard way right now. Right. Now I, I just want to say if, the, if your car breaks down like your bank account, whatever, if you got a five yeah. cents in there, that don't change the faithfulness of God. Wow. No, it doesn't. God, God don't change. You see, it's there's some situations out of your reach. So you, there's nothing you could do about it. Even if you're working double shifts or what, there's not some things are just out of your reach. You can't, there's nothing you can do about it. But when you start to connect to the presence of God and you start to experience that peace, then you start to recognize God is in control. All God yeah. got to do is move one little piece of the puzzle and that's it. All God, all, all the Lord has to do is just touch Come somebody's on. heart to go and bless you or to, to go give you a word of wisdom. Yeah. That's, Believe it. But if you don't go into prayer, you don't push in and you, and you obey your feelings instead then that's when you, that's when you lose the, the, the fight, you know, that's when you start to get depressed and you start to listen to the voice of the enemy. His voice becomes magnified instead of magnifying, you know, uh, instead of listening to, to voices, God, and mag how do you listen to, to um, God's voice? Go magnify his name, go lift up his name. And as you're praising and you're worshiping him, he starts to download things in your heart. He'll tell you, my son, my daughter, I'm in control. I'm about to give you some favors. So new doors are opening for you. I just want you to experience my peace. I, I, I want to let you know who's the boss once again. Yes, sir. I'm the Praise boss. Good work. You're doing Good work. too much. You're trying too hard. You, you don't have come to on. do that. Relax. Relax in my presence. Just Good be work. still. Praise know that I'm God. I'm, I'm going to come through for you. So amen. Amen. God amen. always comes you, through. He's faithful. Um, He's faithful. We got a prayer request. Stephen Whitney, Good is work. it possible for you amen. to come into the Zoom? If it's possible for you to come into the Zoom, please come into the Zoom. If you can't, we'll pray for you. Let us know. Comment if you could come into the Zoom. You know, as I grow and mature in the Lord, one of the things that I find peace in is doing the will of God. Mm. I do. When I when I do the will of God, like when I get off this podcast, I'd be so charged up and encouraged. After I came from Open Door Mission last night, I was so charged up and encouraged. Everything that I was worried about was pushed to the background and moved to the side. Sure. Because what we need to understand is they're nothing but noise, clutter, and distraction. Amen. That's all they are. If Satan could get you entangled in the cares of this world, mm. you will be unfruitful. That's right. You will be oh. ineffective as a soldier of Jesus Christ in his army. You will not be effective. Mm. You need to lay these things aside, number one. And number two, we also need to take some accountability and repent of some things as well. That will lighten the load. Amen. Mm. For instance, some of us may be worried about finances. Did you ever think that maybe you don't need more finances? You just got to be better with what you have. Mm. And that's a good point. Man. Maybe you don't yeah. need cable. Everything that's on there is of the devil anyway. Mm. Mm. True. Maybe true. you need Very to stop true. eating out five times a week. Right. Bake some chicken, make right. a sandwich. <laughs> that was me. No, I, I, no, no, no. Listen, listen. It's that's not, real. it's not to, to what I'm saying is steward. The, the Bible talks about right. stewardship. Right. Does it not? True. Amen. Be better with what you have. That's good. And then you won't work. always have your hand. Oh, Lord, I need more. I need more. No, it's no, being no, no. A father. It's being a father. Listen, right listen. I can't give you a, a, a thousand dollars. You can't handle a hundred. You can't even handle ten. Right. 
right? So let's yep. steward. Some stewardship is what's needed. See, that's a form of repentance, a change mm. of mind. That's why I'm bringing this out. Maybe you Amen. need to no, repent right. from how you've been handling your that's finances. Be deep. better with what you have. Get organized. Get on a budget. Figure some things out. But also mm. give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to the Lord what is the Lord's. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right? We live on a, distant, a different economic system. Sowing and reaping. Amen. As believers, we live on a different economic system. Yes, we need the Lord to come through, help us out sometimes. But listen, sometimes you've yeah. got to be take some accountability. Right. You need to be better with what you got too. Mm -hmm. Seriously, stop being so wasteful. You ever notice on TV they're always trying to sell you something? Mm. What did he say is in the world? The lust of the eyes, right? Yeah. Here, come get this taco. Come get this cheeseburger. Mm. Buy these shoes. You okay. need this car. You need this. You all that's all that's on TV. Consumption, commercial after commercial after commercial after commercial. Sure. They want to keep you blind and bound. Man, turn that nonsense off. You don't need nothing. What you sure. need to do is turn that TV off, get into the word of God. Man. All true. right. That's true. Don't, 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 don't stop at Burger King. Make a turkey sandwich. It ain't gonna kill you. Mm. That's right. That's true, right? Bake some chicken, it ain't Southern gonna hurt you. Be that's better true. with what you have. Listen. Stop allowing Satan to entangle you in the cares of this world. Mm. You have everything that you need in Christ Amen. Jesus. Everything Amen. that you need. Amen. He will Amen. deny nothing from you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 He is. Praise God. He's our, yeah. Amen. He's our counselor. He's our comfort. Just tap in to the Stephen Holy Spirit. Stephen Whitney. He'll lead you. Man. Okay. He's trying to get into he's the zone come now. In. Okay. Praise God. Somebody said that peace be different. Amen. Come on. Definitely supernatural. Yeah, that's my guy right there. He taps in. Blessings, brother. Appreciate you. What Amen. Is it? I'm where I, I can't I can't pronounce his name. Yeah, it's, it's kind of yeah, that's I was looking. I was but that's my guy. I, I see him on. He taps in. Appreciate Hamura. you. Hamura. I think it's Hamura, probably. Yeah, appreciate Hamura. your encouragement. God bless. Amen. So we're almost going to two hours into the podcast already. Don't even don't even feel like it, but oh. We're going to keep it open before we, we shut down. We're going to give, uh, I believe, one of the brothers that wanted to tap in, um, coming to the Zoom for prayer and for questions. We just we just got it open. We're going to stay on for a little bit longer, and then we'll, you know, just close out with our final thoughts and prayer. I know God is definitely moving. He's ministering. Hallelujah. So who was that trying to come in here? Who was it? Uh, Stephen Whitney. Um, I'm trying to find your name. Stephen Whitney. He said he could try. Yep, he says he needs prayer and is believing that God can heal his acid reflex, depression, and anxiety. God mm -hmm. has been helping him through the last weeks, but it's a struggle. Uh, but he's walking through with the Lord. See, if you could come in, if you can't come in, we will lift you up right now. We're going to come against all that in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus Christ is a chain breaker. He's a <laughs> healer, a deliverer. You will be set free and whole in Jesus' name. That's right. We believe in the in the power of God. We ain't just on here oh, talking. There he is. Amen. Come on in. Praise we God. Believe it. The power of God. We're going to demonstrate. Hallelujah. Stephen. Let's connect now. Hey, Brother Stephen. Hey, Praise hey. God. Hello. How are you? Hello. Not bad. How are you doing? Good. Blessed. Blessed. It's good to have you on with us. We appreciate you. Thank you. We're going to lift you up in prayer, brother. Praise God. Jesus is going to set you free. I appreciate it. You believe that he can do it? Yes, sir. Well, that's all it takes is faith that's it. and then agreement. Everybody on here is in agreement by faith. Praise mm -hmm. God. Lou, you want to lift our brother up? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the, I'm trying to look it up again. What was it? Uh, my phone's acting weird. Oh, just prayer from believing God's acid reflex and depression. Okay. Well, yes. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank yes, you, oh God, that, that you are the healer, that you are the deliverer, yes, that you yes, are the same Lord. yesterday, today, and forever. And you don't yes. change, oh God. We change from time to time, but, but you never change. Yes. You always stay the same, oh God. We yes. believe in your word. We believe in your promises. So we just pray yes. for our, our brother Stephen right now, oh God. We yes, come Lord. against that acid reflex. We come against the spirit of depression and anxiety Jesus. in Jesus' name. Yes. We find you in Jesus' name. We come against you, and we command you to loose his body now in Jesus' yes. name. By the Jesus blood name. of Jesus that was shed. Depression, you've been defeated at Calvary. Spirit of infirmity, yes. you've been defeated at Calvary yes. by the blood of Jesus. Yes. And we command you to loose him now. You have yes. no authority over him. You have no power over his mind. Yes. You have no power over his body because it belongs to God. 
who is God? Jesus is God. And Jesus yes, shed his blood on the cross for Stephen so he could be made whole in every area of his life. So, Father, we just loose your peace upon him. We loose the spirit of power of God upon him. Yes, we loose a sound mind Jesus. upon him. And we pray that the joy of the Lord will be his strength, oh God. Yes, Father. And may he just continue to focus on you, not how he feels, but may he continue to keep his eyes on you, the healer, the miracle worker, because you are faithful and you will show up for him, oh God. You said in your word, according to your faith, let it be unto you. So let it be unto him according to his faith, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. And I want to encourage him too. Um, just two words, put, put on. So you have depression. What, what overcomes depression? You put on, you put on Jesus. You put on the garment of praise. Yes. What does the Bible say? Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Praise right. will kick the devil out. Praise, That's right. yes. praise kicked Paul and Silas out of jail. Praise what did Saul do when he was uh, when he was overcome with demons? He said, "Go get me a harpist. Go get me a harpist. Go, go, go! Pray these demons on me." And there's two uh, there's two words: put on the garment of praise. And when he says, "Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, uh, heavy uh, burden," I will get, I put on. He also says, "Put on my yoke is easy." So put on light. put on his yoke. And put on his That's praise. Right. Good work. That's the only thing that drives the devil out is praise, praising the God. And when you praise him, what does it say? It says God abides in the praises of his people. Amen. Once you praise him, the God of creation, the God of all, the, the almighty creator and healer has to, he, he can't lie. He has to come into your midst, into your presence. If you praise him, he has to come into your, so put on. Praise. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, strong, strong. Praise Amen. God. Come back when the come back with your new weapon, the testimony. We want to hear the testimony of what the Lord has done. And like yes, what sir. brother Jeremy said, push into God. Don't don't go by your feelings. Don't just do do the truth. Do what's right. What is right? Spending time yeah. with Jesus. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Now nope. we got to do something. We there's something that you got to. God requires us to draw near to That's Him. Right. The Bible says, and yeah. then right. He draws near to you. And when God draws near to you, you're healed. You're delivered. You're set free. Yeah, I'm just going to confirm it a third time. I'm going to tell you everything that JJ said. Draw, draw closer to Christ. That's the it. more you draw closer to Christ, the more you'll see of him, the more you'll delight in him. The less you'll see of yourself, the less you'll see of the world. And what will happen is there'll be a change of mind and a transfer that will take place. You'll no longer have depression because your joy will come from God and not anything of this world. That makes that sense. Yeah. He will be your fortress, your stronghold. You will find peace in him. He's your shelter. That's the place. Listen, when anxiety tries to come to me and also anxiety is an alarm system telling that you telling you it's time to pray. Mm. Whenever you get anxious about something, I want you to take it to prayer and pray until you feel a release about that thing. Whatever it is, it's making Amen. you anxious. That's why the okay. scripture says, be anxious for nothing but everything by prayer and supplication. Let your request mm -hmm. be made known unto the Lord in the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Yeah. So guard our hearts and our minds. Listen, yeah. take it to God in prayer, whatever it is that's making you anxious. Draw closer yeah. to him. Worship, praise. Come back, share a testimony with us. Yeah, praise God. One wow. more thing. One more thing. Uh, what's, his, what's his name again? I'm sorry. What's your name? Steve, right? Steve. Yeah. Steve, Steve, Steve your, true, your true bodily nature is to praise God. When the rock, when the rock sits out there and the tree waves and the wind and the water sit there they're doing their purpose they're praising they're they're serving they're uh serving the purpose why they were created your purpose your 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 true nature of our body is to praise god as the birds chirp they're praising their god because they're serving their purpose when a human being does not praise god you're not serving their purpose and you're not filling yourself with the spirit the spirit is the only thing that gives you uh the freedom and the true joy and the true energy, if you want to call it energy. Um, so if you're not doing what your body is, 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 is fashioned for, you're not putting gasoline in your body. You will feel depressed. Yep. Don't believe the lie of the devil. Spend time in, like Gerard said, spend time in prayer. Put on praise and kick the devil out. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, be encouraged. And if you want, if you have any prayer throughout the week, when, when you don't see us on here, just Hit one of our inboxes, man. We'll, we'll, we'll love to pray with you and give you some encouragement. We Thanks all need so it. Going. All right, brother. Have a great night. You Praise too. God. God bless you. Bless All right you. now.
Wow. Miracles. Yeah, I believe that yeah, God, God is moving. There, there's somebody in here, as far as what I could read, his name is Patrick. He said that he he said, My mute got breakable. Wow. God touched this when I speak. I believe he's saying as he's watching even his podcast, like God is like touching his mouth to speak as, as he's watching. Come on. So praise the Lord. Amen. Praise Thank God. Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. That's what, that's what God is doing. God is Amen. good. Anybody mm -hmm. else before we close out? Prayer. Yeah, we're about to close out. It's gonna come hop in. Come on now. God is good. Paul Twist. We see you. Paul Twist oh, Paul, is in here. Brother in law. Malign. Malign. Malign's been in here tapping in. She's a new one. Bless Praise the Lord. Praise and make God. sure all of you in here, we hope you push that share button. If you agree with the word, push that share button. Amen. Amen. Tacos. Jam said tacos. <laughs> Guys, I said don't don't eat the taco. Make a sandwich. It's just, <laughs> it's just you using an example. Don't read Jasmine. Don't read. Don't Jasmine. Don't read. <laughs> listen. Just listen, Jasmine. I was just making an example. It was an example. Five dollar box. Tacos. And have corn. Eat corn tortillas instead of flour tortillas. That's yes, right. That's what he taught us. Less calories. But but you guys don't like the 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 the, the corn tortillas are so much better. I got an idea. Fast and so eat much... the word of God. <laughs> oh, just don't eat it all. Eat the word of God for breakfast and lunch. And then break it with a five dollar box. There you go. No, don't. <laughs> Man, I didn't have coffee for two. Don't uh, buy two a five dollar box. <laughs> don't listen to, no to, to make some noodles mm. or something. Save some cheddar. Five dollar box. And you can take that money. And you can sew it somewhere. Man, Man. I, didn't, I didn't have coffee a couple days ago. It wasn't good. Well, pra well, praise the Lord. You know, what a powerful what a powerful night with all of you that are, uh, you know, we're in the comment section. We know the Lord was talking. Um, we just hope that, um, you, that, that you reach out to the Lord when it comes to repentance and you know, when it comes to forgiveness and forgiving others and, and forgiving yourself. You don't have to walk around condemned with a heavy weight on you. Just throw it at the feet of Jesus Christ. He's alive. He's, he's powerful. He's faithful. And he responds when you when you call on his name. I'm going to keep saying that. <laughs> Plugging it. Let me uh, <laughs> no, but, but, but when you call on the name of Jesus, he responds. He's faithful. He always responds. Maybe not the way you want him to, but he always responds, yeah. especially when you come with a genuine heart. Okay. He, he'll mm -hmm. show you himself. So don't go by your feelings. Just push into the Lord. Forgive others. Forgive yourself. Don't beat yourself up. And uh, when it comes to sin, repent, turn from your wicked ways. God will help you do that as well. Amen. Come I don't on. know if you guys have a um, a final thought before um, Brother Spencer closes us in prayer. Amen. Amen. Uh, it was um, that was a great time on repentance and forgiving yourself, forgiving others. Uh -huh. and just have a great attitude of, of what we said. It all comes down to one per uh, one thing. God is we will we will go through the valley, but but uh, the, the key word is we'll be going through the valley. We won't, we won't stay in the valley. So as That's you right. forgive, as you Pass repent, through. you become a better person. And, and God's looking for true repentance. John 4, God's looking for a people that will worship him in spirit, in spirit and, in truth. and in truth. Praise God. So, well, I just want to acknowledge all of you that was on here. You spent time with us tonight. Cynthia Ann. She says it's time. her first time on. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading me here. We appreciate you wow. for being Amen. on here with us. Um, it encourages us to keep going. This is Always. what we do it for, for the people. Um, we don't know everything. Whatever it is that God gives us, we use it. Amen. Amen. We use it to bless you because, you know, sometimes people ask. I, I just want to leave you with this closing thought and just challenge you. This just came to my heart. Sometimes people are asking God for more, but you're not using what he gave you in the first mm. place. Come on. Some of you want more, more power, more wisdom, more revelation, but you're not mm -hmm. using what he gave you now anyways. I back that mm -hmm. up with the book of Acts. There's a brother named Apollos that said he was mighty in the scriptures and he preached the word mm -hmm. of God, but it says he only knew the uh, baptism of John. That's all he knew, but he used it for the kingdom. And then it says someone came along and added to that and they built that brother up. We got to build each other up more, saints. I want to encourage Amen. you to do that. Let's stop nitpicking and pointing the finger all the time as well. If someone is in error, let's correct them. If they don't want to hear it, move on. But listen, let's build each other up, encourage one another. You can't ask God to bless what you're not doing. Stop asking God for more if you're not using what he already gave you. Oh, I, I want another word. Well, you ain't responding That's to right. the last five words he gave you. 
Listen, respond, step out on faith. Use what God has poured into you already. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Jesus shout, name. shout out. I'm going to give a shout out to Ra Raquel Garcia. Titi. Okay. That's my that's my wife's aunt. So I guess okay, it's my Titi th too, right? Oh. Hey, Titi, yes. bless Praise God. God. Praise God, Titi. <laughs> uh, Megan, Amen. God bless you. Good to have God bless. you on here, sis. Blessings, everybody that joined us again. We appreciate everybody. you guys. We do this every Saturday at 830. We enjoy doing it. Eastern we time. That's right. We sacrifice, but we enjoy doing it. We enjoy sharing the word of God. Amen. Um, so just pray for us as we pray for you. Amen. Amen. Father, I just thank you yes, for everyone Lord. that has watched this tonight. I pray that your word will not be stripped away by the enemy, that we will not walk away and uh, quickly forget it. Mm. Let it be planted in our heart. May it take root. May it produce fruit in our lives, Lord, unto salvation, unto greater repentance, unto a deeper relationship with you. And I come against anything that is hindering everyone on here that's watching from their destiny, yes, Father. We break every chain in the name of Jesus that Jesus, has them bound. Any sin, any cares of this world, anything that has them bound up that's keeping them from you, we remove it right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, I pray Lord. that there will be peace in their minds and their hearts and in their homes. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Y'all be blessed. Y'all be, be blessed. God bless you guys. Amen. All right now.